Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto gets proper training Sasuke bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Dark Wolfie and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Story start, Naruto could admit that he was lots of things. Stubborn, hot-headed, and a bit of a loud mouth. But so too could he honestly say that he was willing to put in all the hard work necessary when needed. You didn't get to paint the Hokage monument after all without having some skill after all. That being said, after his sensei had dismissed his team early after another dull day of team training, Naruto really was beginning to think they were being shafted. They could sort of work together sure, but they weren't learning anything. No jutsu, no skills, hell, even dog breath was talking about the awesome stuff his teacher was showing them. Not that he was into eavesdropping. Not at all. Frustrated and ready for the day to be over, Naruto shoved his hands in his jacket pockets and made his way home. Maybe old man Tucci would have a story or two for him. Corset for Raymond, Naruto set off. The sun was still decently high in the sky and there was a good breeze that rustled through the trees around him. As he got into the village proper he wanted to enjoy the outside as much as possible. Though with the looks the villagers sent his way as he started making his way through the crowd that hope was dashed as well. Pulling his jacket tighter but keeping a wide smile on his face, Naruto focused on nothing else but hitting the Raymond stand. Gucci had been around for a decent amount of time in this village, from the last war to the Kaiubi attack till now, he'd heard some crazy stories and served everyone from civilians to hokages. That said, watching Naruto drag himself into his stand to sit with a bright but fake smile on his face never sat well with him. Already working on and preparing a Mizo Raymond for the kid, he'd lend an ear just as he always did. How's it going Naruto? Another hard day of training. If you could call it that. I wanna train, but Kakashi Sensei says training too much would be just as bad as not training enough. Secretly, Naruto got the feeling that Kakashi didn't want to train them at all. Well, why don't you go train on your own then? AM poked her head out from the back where she was preparing more broth, ever chipper and happy to see the young blonde, she was like an older sister Naruto never had. That'd be great if I knew what to train in. Sure I can work out for hours and hours, but that's it and I can only do so much of that in one day. Why don't you get scrolls from the library? You're a genin now aren't you? Tucci mentioned offhandedly as he remembered several previous genin and chunin mentioning the ninja library. I didn't think about it, while well, school hadn't been the greatest for him as it was full of teachers who either saw a demon not worth training or eventually a knucklehead who only wanted attention. No one had mentioned being able to go in the library once he was a genin. He had tried once while in the academy and been turned away, but maybe it'd be different now. Placing a bowl down and looking out at the high sun the old proprietor nodded, maybe give it a shot. If your sensei is giving you lots of free time, maybe he's waiting for you to take some initiative. Tucci had seen it before. Nodding and already working on his first bowl, Naruto figured he could at least give it a shot. No matter what anyone thought of him, he could sit down and read when needed. He had learned the cage bushin in a single night after all. Going over the idea some more, already downing and working on a second bowl now, Naruto nodded to himself and decided it was off to the library then. Watching the boy work through several bowls before laying down money and wishing them both a good day, Tucci had a smile on his face, as at least now the smile on the boy's face looked a little more genuine. Shaking himself and welcoming a team into his stand, he put it in his mind to check up on the boy next time he came by. Naruto however was all but sprinting through town, dodging through people and other ninja alike, as at the least, he could either get this out of the way and get good news. Or get rejected and spend the rest of the night working out and beating the crap out of a training post. Moving from the market district and coming up closer to the Hokage Tower, it wasn't much longer where along an unmarked red and tan building, he found the library itself. High windows and a clean exterior, Naruto put faith in that hopefully things would be different this time. Pushing open the door and walking in, he was met with silence with a heavy smell of paper and wood. There was a reception desk ahead of him, and ignoring the odd tingle that ran through him, he walked up to a stern-looking woman at the desk. Uh, hello. His voice cracked at the worst time, and he really sounded more timid than he wanted to, but the woman looked him up and down all the same. Um, first time in here yes. Adjusting thin glasses while consulting a book on her desk, she pushed aside a scroll and looked at something out of his sight, while Naruto nodded. Genin are allowed everything unrestricted D rank and below. C rank scrolls and books are allowed with either sensei or hokage approval. Under normal circumstances anything B rank and above is not allowed to genin outside of very special circumstances. Noise is to be kept to a minimum and there will be no jutsu practice inside. Training scrolls can be released, but copying of scrolls is out of the question. Looking at the boy in front of her, the older black-haired woman raised an eyebrow, any questions? He had a ton for the tall but real thin woman but decided to keep it to the basics for now. He was already happy enough that he would be allowed in. 
Oh my sensei leaves me on my own a lot, do you have an area for training scrolls? Nodding and motioning behind her and to her left, his right, she pointed down a dark hallway, training scrolls for basic jutsu, chakra control, and jutsu theory are that way. Again keep to your rank. Your hit I ate was pinged as soon as you walked in, so we'll know if you pick something up that you aren't supposed to, understand. Ah, that's why you didn't ask for my id. Wait, what else did you ping? That was new, he didn't know they could hit him with just his headband. Blinking for a moment, the woman looked him over again before nodding, this is a protected building, so as soon as you walk through the door, you were checked for Jinjutsu, hit I8 forgery, or cosmetic applications. Anything else? Shaking his head in the negative, Naruto walked past the reception desk and made his way down quiet rows of bookshelves and desks. There weren't many people in here today it seemed, and the few that were present were all head deep in books or scrolls. Sakura probably comes here a lot muttering to himself Naruto paid attention to the labels on the shelves he walked by. Training scrolls, training scrolls, ah, training. Finding the section he wanted, he started browsing down the rows with carefully labeled scrolls and books. Realizing just how many there were, he decided to stick to what he kind of knew and work from there. He had already been warned he couldn't go straight for the high-level stuff, but maybe there were some D-level scrolls that could help him out. Walking further down this particular row and finding the D-rank training scrolls and seeing multiple copies of everything, Naruto browsed a bit before picking out four that might be able to help him out. It didn't take him nearly as long to reach the front desk again, where he presented the scrolls to the bookkeeper. Can I take these? Taking the scrolls and looking them over, the woman nodded, chakra control, clone theory, and basic exploding tag seals. Boys and their explosions looking him over again she handed them back, if I may ask, why the clone theory? Caught off guard as he wasn't prepared for anyone to be interested in his actual thoughts, he let a small grin hit his face, I've never been able to make normal clones, but I can make shadow clones. So I wanted to see if maybe there was a reason why. Wait, you can make shadow clones. At Naruto's nod, the woman frowned, if you would, show me please. Shrugging and putting the scrolls back on the desk, Naruto formed the cross-shaped seal and pumped chakra into it. With a puff of smoke, there stood a dozen copies, along with the appearance of several ninja with frantic looks. Tanaka-san, is everything okay? Waving the group off, the now named Tanaka nodded, everything is fine, I asked him to demonstrate his skill. Please, go back to your duties. Sighing as the group of five elder ninja blurred away, the librarian sighed and handed all the scrolls back to Naruto. Some advice, if you would like it. Naruto nodded, uh, sure. Dispelling his clones, he was absolutely ready to get out of here. Did your teacher mention the special skill of the shadow clones, or did you learn this on your own? On my own. Then no one has probably mentioned to you, but shadow clones have the special ability of sharing information. Anything a clone learns, you learn once they are dispelled. That also includes chakra control and techniques. Just, something to keep in mind. Giving the genin an appraising eye, she would have to make a visit to an old monkey once her shift was over today. Suddenly learning that his one good skill was even more super awesome than he thought, Naruto was beaming as he bowed to the woman who actually took some time to teach him something. Thanks Tanaka-san, uh, when do I need to have these scrolls back? Waving the boy away, she was already turning back to her work with a smile on her face, those are D-rank scrolls, keep them as long as you need, but usually we'd like them back within a month. But if you do lose or damage them, it isn't such a big deal. At least the boy was polite she noted as he waved and ran out the door. Naruto was only focused on one thing at the moment though, and that was that he had the chance to do something finally. He would be training properly now. Oh he was going to be busy this week for sure. The, the Kashi was a lot of things he knew, a pervert, lazy, constantly lost. But he generally always had an idea of what he was getting himself into. That said today, as he strolled into practice at his usual three hours late, he was met with an odd sight. Sasuke was fuming which normally wouldn't be that odd, but it wasn't directed at him which was. Sakura was frowning over Sasuke which wasn't new so that he could ignore. But multiple copies of Naruto running up and down trees while hopefully the real one was doing push-ups with a rock on his back was not something he expected to see. Seeing though that everyone was here, Kakashi clapped his hands with an eye smile, alright everyone, let's get to our mission for the day. Kakashi sensei, you're late. Sakura was as always, predictable. Clones popping and shrugging off the rock, a sweating Naruto jogged up to the group, about time sensei, what are we doing today? Motioning for the kids to follow him, Kakashi pulled out his favorite book, The Usual, another D-rank mission, followed by team drills. Then you're off on your own. The three genin following along behind him, Sasuke in the middle with Sakura and Naruto on either side of him, they made their way to the tower. Sasuke had his hands deep in his pockets, while Sakura continued to pester him over some gossip overheard by Ino and the village busybodies. Naruto had his arms crossed behind his head while he walked, for once not inclined to bother the pinkhead. 
He had trained all night at their training ground before passing out, then waking up and starting up again before anyone else had shown up. At first he had started with clone theory, sure that somewhere in the scroll he might find the secret as to why he couldn't do a basic clone. But after reading through it all the answer wasn't any better than he already had a feeling for. It all came down to control, control that he didn't have. Sure he could pump chakra for days, but even he knew that he used way too much. So instead that had moved him to chakra control exercises. He ignored the simple ones that explained holding leaves to parts of his bodies and instead moved on to harder ones. That was what he worked on all night and this morning, the tree climbing. Using chakra to stick to solid surfaces sounded super useful, both for ninja stuff and for pranks. So he trained and trained, dispelling clones after so long to learn what they knew and creating new ones to continue the process. The first thing he learned was that dispelling too many clones all at once was a quick way to guarantee a big headache for himself. So for now he limited himself to groups of 20 or less. Maybe as he got better he'd be able to do more at once. The ideas were already churning in his head. Already at the mission collection desk and retrieving their mission for the day, Kakashi was doing his best to ignore the distracted and muttering Yuzumaki. While he was happy at least one of his students was taking initiative, being truly distracted wasn't a good thing. He'd have to clue the kid in on how to keep at least partial attention to his surroundings. Thank you Hokage-sama, is there anything else? Yes actually. Naruto-kun, could you stay for a moment? The elderly ninja was decked out in his wide and red Hokage robes today, hat firmly planted on his head. To either side of him Chunin assistants were helping sort and distribute missions along with him. Feeling Kakashi nudge him and break his train of thought, Naruto came out of his daze to see that they were already at the tower, oh what, what's that? Tuckling and shaking his head, stay behind Naruto, I need a word with you. Watching the boy nod, Kakashi steered Sasuke and Sakura away. We'll be just outside Naruto. We're after Tora again today. Without another word the masked ninja moved to guide his students out the door. Turning his now full attention to the elder Hokage, Naruto put his hands in his pockets and grinned, what's up old man? Ready to recognize my greatness. Sighing at Naruto's antics, Saratobi shook his head, no Naruto, though I did get some news yesterday. You showed off your clone technique at the library yes. While not exactly against the rules the employees there were very nervous with any jutsu used within their halls. Ah, yeah, am I in trouble for that. Tanaka-sen asked me to show I could do it after all. Well it wouldn't have been the first time someone had tricked him in order to make him look bad, it really would suck if the librarian was someone who would be on the hate Naruto train. No no, but I have something for you. Handing over a small but sealed scroll to the boy who took it without a word and backed away, the Hokage nodded, I'm giving you access to C-rank chakra control exercises and clone theory only. Nothing more. Considering your position, I thought it might help you to get ahead on those subjects. Nothing else for now, understand. I can revoke your access and make you wait until Chunin like everyone else at any time. Giving the boy a stern look, his weathered skin pulling in a way that made Naruto shake his head quickly. No way, just what you've told me I can look at and nothing else. I'll be good. Not wanting to give up this good fortune, Naruto pocketed the scroll and saluted, anything else old man? Waving the boy off as the next team was walking in, Saratobi shook his head, be on your way then, and I'll be watching you. Leaving the boy with that cryptic message the aging man watched as Naruto turned and jogged out of the room. Outside was bright, and while Naruto didn't have to look hard to find his team, somehow everything felt better today. Sorry, I'm here now. Seeing his teacher nod, they all turned to complete their turn of hunting down the dreaded demon cat of Konoha. Story start, the day found Team 7 early in the morning and waiting for their errant sensei to show up from wherever his latest excuse put him this time. Sasuke had taken to following Naruto's example but was training his great fireball technique while Naruto's clones were again continuing chakra control exercises on the trees. Naruto himself was doing something that even had Sakura trying to puzzle him out. And that. Naruto had a scroll open and was repeatedly writing something down. Around him were another dozen clones doing the same. Walking over to stand over one of them, Sakura tilted her head and the vaguely familiar scroll, what's that Naruto? Not looking up from what he was doing, N-A-R-U-T-O or a clone of him at least, continued his work while answering his crush, trying to make exploding tags. Confused as to why he would go through that effort at all, Sakura stood up straight with her hands on her hips, couldn't you just buy a bunch of those? Why learn how to make them? That's what everyone else did after all and they worked just fine. Deciding explaining to the girl that some shops still didn't want to sell things to him and that it would be dumb expensive if he was able to buy the amount he needed for what he had planned, he instead went with a more bookish answer. If I learn how to make them, I can make traps with them besides just using paper bombs. Nodding at the actual thoughtful answer, Sakura walked away, if you say so, I think you're just wasting your time. Sasu could just blow everyone away with his fireball anyway. Strutting away from the loudmouth blonde, Sakura's curiosity was sated for now. 
Yada. Think I got it. One of his CLONES or maybe that was the real Naruto, began putting some chakra into the seal he made on a scrap of paper in his excitement. Wait wait wait, not so close you idiot. Another Naruto cried out, while a more aware clone grabbed the now freaking out copy, holding the paper tag by the jacket. Sorry buddy. Heaving and tossing the clone up and over the trees, the explosion sent a blast wave that rocked the training ground and knocked leaves from the trees above them all. All movement and training stopped with Sasuke and Sakura turning irritated looks at the nervously grinning blonde. Uh, I did it. We can see that you knucklehead. Sakura was always quick to show off her impressive lungs, Naruto noted. Dope. Going back to his own training Sasuke put the blonde out of his mind. He could train all he liked, but Inichiha would always be better than him. Shrugging while sorting through the memories, Naruto dispelled his tag-making group before remaking a new one. Alright guys, practice makes perfect. And if you make a tag, run off a bit before setting it off okay. Hi. Getting a chorus of responses, they all set to work. This was what Kakashi walked into this morning, a disgruntled Sakura and slightly exhausted Sasuke watching as a procession of Naruto's ran off towards the lake, only to explode in spectacular fashion. Shaking his head and clapping his hands together, Kakashi got everyone's attention, sorry everyone, a black cat tried to cross my path, so I had to find a new route where I ran into the snake that tried to bite me. But I'm here now. Liar. Sakura and for once even Sasuke joined in on her finger pointing. Huh, that couldn't bode well for him could it? Mama, come on now, let's go get our mission and we lend early for today na. Smiling as his cute students all formed up before him, they all turned and started heading for the tower. Naruto idly dispelled his clones while pocketing his seal-making tools in his thigh pouch. Before making his now very familiar seal and creating an even larger group of clones that ran back to the training ground. Bakashi raised an eyebrow and watched the clones run off, what's that about Naruto-kun? Ah, I have something of a project I wanted to try out, but I can't do it with everyone at the training ground. It's not having to answer as an explosion rocked the area, and everyone turned to look at the Uzumaki sharply. Ehehe, <laughs> explosions are cool. Sighing and turning away, Kakashi nodded, just don't overdo it okay. We need you all in one piece, not scattered all over the Fire Nation. It wasn't long after that the team had all made it to the tower, picked up their next lackluster mission, and were on their way to the east side fields to help with some weeding for civilian farmers. All of the genin wanted to complain, but after their first few attempts and Naruto getting swatted for trying to use clones, they all relented and got to work. Sakura had already given up on keeping her dress clean, eventually covered up to the knees in dirt and grass. Sasuke and Naruto weren't much better after too long, though somehow Naruto shivered from time to time which Kakashi figured was a clone exploding and sending its memories back to him. Shrugging at the teenager's antics, Kakashi returned to his book and watched as the sun rose past noon and slowly began to sink in the sky. The more experienced ninja mentally lamented that it was probably too much to ask for every day to be this peaceful. But at least these kids didn't have to go through what he and his team did. At least not if he could help it. The day coming to an end on its own, the team reported their mission complete and went their separate ways. Sakura trying to follow Sasuke home and pester him for a date and Naruto now heading back to the training field instead of going to his empty apartment. It was as he returned to the now empty training ground and sat down in the middle of it that he pulled a new training scroll from his pocket to begin reading. After getting the go-ahead from Jiji, he had made it a point to return his last set of scrolls and left with only two new ones. A book on basic seals, where he was working on the first set of his exploding tags, and a scroll about the shunshin. He hadn't realized that the jutsu was only a deer rank, but after reading the description on it, he sort of got it. Sure he could move really fast and appear wherever he could see or knew. But it left him open for a moment if he wasn't prepared. However if he had a clone do it, that vulnerability became a moot issue. Especially if the clone was supposed to be caught. Reading and memorizing the scroll over the next half hour. Naruto stashed it away before filling the clearing with clones. Alright. We have all night, let's get this technique down pat by morning. Yosh. It was going to be a long night for the boy. The contrary to what his students thought, Kakashi wasn't always the late one to team meetings. In fact, he was usually the first. He liked to watch them, see if they were in fact there on time, or slacking off. While at first he had been worried as they did nothing but wait for him for hours on end, he was slightly proud that at least one of them had started taking the time to start training on his own. Though, now as he looked at an exhausted but snoring Yuzumaki, Kakashi felt he should probably step in this once. Hopping from the trees and walking over to a battered but whole Naruto, his sensei squatted down to shake the boy by his shoulder. Naruto, wake up, the ground isn't your bed. NGH, 5 more minutes Kakashi sensei, I promise I it took a moment for Naruto to wake up slightly and another one to realize he wasn't at home again. Bleary eyes opened to an eye smiling sensei and had just passed on training ground. 
A looking around and seeing his teammates not around, Naruto let his head thump heavily on the dirt, I overdid it, didn't I? Nodding and standing up straight, Kakashi sighed, you did. Do you think you're up for a mission today? Standing slowly with a groan and stretching to work out the kinks in his muscles, Naruto nodded with slowly building enthusiasm. I'll run off and get some morning ramen, and I'll be good to go. Already turning to leave, he was forced to pause as Kakashi stopped him with a hand on his shoulder. Alright wait a minute, time to be a sensei for a minute. Sit down and listen to me, alright. Watching the boy do just as he asked, listening to the stern tone for once, Kakashi nodded in approval. I have new training rules for you, and I expect you to follow them, got it? Akman sensei. I'm fine, honest. Finally feeling like he was catching up, the attention-starved boy didn't want to slow down now. I'm not going to tell you to stop training, but no more all-nighters. You need to be in bed by 10, and you can't be at the training ground before 7 unless it's for a mission. Got it? Seeing the boy give a dejected nod, he continued, you have to give your body and your mind time to rest and heal. You won't make good progress if you don't. Also, after missions and training with the team, you need to give yourself at least two hours of downtime before starting up your evening training, got it? You need more than just ninja training in your life. That was a lesson Kakashi had learned too late, but he could pass on that bit of life lesson to the boy. Fine fine, I'll tone it down. Anything else? I'm glad you asked. Opening a storage seal behind his back, Kakashi presented a basket full of fruits and vegetables, with the amount of training you're doing, Raymond isn't enough, we need to balance out your diet. I know you haven't had someone to explain nutrition to you, but you're going to be a shorty forever if you don't start eating better. Plus, you'll never put on any muscle either, get it? Even more dejected but willing to listen to his sensei that actually seemed to be trying for once, Naruto nodded one last time. Okay okay, I'll start eating better. Trying to at least. He hadn't said Raymond was out, just that he needed to eat other stuff too. Good, now off you go. I don't want to see you back here for at least two hours. Plus, Kakashi figured, it'd irritate his other two students to see Naruto late as well. They needed to relax some. Ignoring his sensei as he pulled free his pervy book and disappeared into the trees, Naruto himself made a half-ram sign and disappeared into a swirl of leaves, basket in hand. Not more than a few moments later Naruto was walking through his front door with a yawn and a frown, guess I gotta eat some cruddy rabbit food and take a quick nap before heading back. His stomach deciding to grumble loudly in that moment, he would admit that he was hungry enough to ignore the fact that what he had wasn't Raymond. That didn't mean he couldn't grab a quick snack on the way back to the team meeting. Thought in mind Naruto set about putting his basket of groceries on the table before heading to his room to shower and change. It wouldn't do to show back up smelling like one of the Inuzuka dogs after all. After cleaning up and changing into a new outfit, he was back to making a quick breakfast of eggs and toast with some added vegetables from what his sensei had graciously given him. Complain he would but he wouldn't waste food, ever. Carefully folding his eggs into a neat omelette, he placed everything on a plate on his table before putting the dirty pan back on the stove. Not as carefully as he should have as some hot oil splashed out and into the still going flame. Shutting the flame off and patting out the small fire with his jacket, Naruto had to groan at the singed sleeve of his coat. Already knowing he wasn't about to put his dirty jacket back on, he ripped this one off and decided today was a t-shirt day. Putting the rest of his gifted groceries away in his fridge and scarfing down his quickly made breakfast, it wasn't even an hour later before he was headed back out of the door and towards the Ichiraku stand, a spare black jacket now over his shoulders and open, showing his black t-shirt with red Uzumaki swirl on the front. Gucci was only just opening up and warming up the stoves and grills, while the clearly energetic Naruto was already bursting through the door with a smile, hey there old man, how about a couple bowls of miso before I join my team for training. Shaking his head with a chuckle, Tucci motioned around the early morning emptiness of the shop. We've only barely opened Naruto, so no Raymond yet, but I think I can put together some onigiri instead. How about it? Seeing the dejected look the boy put on, he eventually smiled and nodded anyway, good, give me just a minute. Next to him, AM smiled at the younger blonde and leaned on the bar, hey there Naruto. Liking the new look, trying something new. Well he still had his usual orange pants, the black shirt and jacket combo seemed to even it out a tad. It was kinda cool she thought. Ah, yeah, that's it. Trying a different look. He wasn't going to admit to burning his spare jacket, any good news or rumors to share. Shaking her head as her dad came back with a plate of three carefully made rice balls, AM sighed, not really anything interesting. Though check with me later, you know I usually have something after lunchtime. Nodding and stuffing one ball in his mouth while leaving his pay and a tip on the counter, Naruto waved to them as he was already out of the door with the other two in his hands. Already at a light jog, he took a little more time to finish the last two rice creations, while appreciating the sleepy morning atmosphere of the village. 
while the sun was low and not many people were out, it was easy to forget that people weren't that happy to have him here in the village, and some were more than happy to see him dead. Gripping his shirt over where the seal for the Kaiubi was, Naruto directed some anger at the beast. If it hadn't attacked when it did, maybe his life would have been more normal. Maybe he would have had parents. Shaking himself out of that thought, as that only lead to sadness and pain, Naruto instead resolved to make sure today was a great day. Of course, as he made it to the training ground, sun now slightly higher in the sky, the look Sakura was giving him had him feeling like his day was already doomed. Where have you been? How could she be so loud first thing in the morning? Uh, Kakashi-sensei isn't here yet, so technically not late. As a forever prankster and skirter of the rules, Naruto lived in the technicalities of life. Well whatever, just don't slow us down, Sasuke-kun can't watch out for you too. While she assumed Sasuke would protect her if anything happened, both boys knew that wasn't going to happen, for one reason or another. Hi hi, Sasuke good, Naruto bad, I got it Sakura. For some reason not feeling up to appeasing the loud Haruno so early this morning, Naruto started his normal routine and created a horde of clones, maybe they could start on water walking today. Slightly put off by the change in the boy's attitude, but not enough to actually say anything, Sakura sat back under a tree and went back to reading. While the boys had taken to training while waiting for their sensei, she was content to read a book in her spare time. Sasuke hadn't even batted an eye as Naruto showed up, nor flinched as the horde of clones got to work with equal parts tree climbing and working on exploding tags. Though one thing was different this morning. Naruto himself had unrolled a truly long blank scroll and had himself plus a dozen others all covering every inch of it in seals. Shaking his head as the dope was going to blow himself up one day, he returned to his own training on increasing the heat of his signature jutsu. And this was what their sensei walked in on. Sakura reading and not paying attention to the world around her. Sasuke exhausting himself practicing his family's main technique and Naruto finishing on something in a scroll and now working it into some type of bracelet. Clapping his hand, all eyes were suddenly on him, no mission today, so we'll do some team drills for a few hours and call it a day. Clones dispersing and almost fully energized, Naruto was ready and able, alright, we're gonna get you today sensei. They would not, however, get even close to Kakashi. But tomorrow would be a new day, and who knew, miracles happen sometimes. Story start, trying to be understanding but still ending up grumpy, aboard Naruto Uzumaki wandered the streets of Konoha. Today was like any other, training before Kakashi Sensei had shown up, work on some of his basic jutsu, and then head out for a D-rank mission before finishing and coming back for training. Except instead of training they were told explicitly to relax and take the rest of the day off, which meant very loud and clear that if their sensei caught any of them T-R-A-I and I-N-G Naruto, they'd be in for a world of trouble. With a sigh Naruto understood that in his own way Kakashi wanted to make sure they weren't wearing themselves out. But the chuckle Naruto figured Sakura didn't have to worry about that at all, but him and Sasuke might. Shaking it off and spotting a shop full of plants, he figured he could at least get a small bag of fertilizer for his house plants while he was out. It wouldn't do to neglect his housemates after all. Walking in and taking in the heady humid smell of plants and earth, he was overcome with peace for just a moment. Welcome to the Yamanaka nursery, what can I help you with? A bored voice answered from the counter, face down in a fashion magazine, Ino Yamanaka in all her pretty blonde glory was manning the counter. Naruto hadn't seen the girl since the end of the academy, but hoped her usual antics weren't about to come out to play. Hey Ino. Where do you guys keep your fertilizer? Deciding to get what he came for and leave quick, he made his way to the counter. Looking up and spotting the loud troublemaker, Ino had to pause for a moment at the different look of the boy. The open black jacket and black tee wasn't a big change, but it was significant enough to give her some pause and made her give the boy a quick once over. Ooh, it, you're not gonna use it for a prank are you? Still wary even if he seemed to be taking things a little more serious if the change of his wardrobe was an indication, she still had to make sure his usual antics didn't come back to her parents shop. No no, I have some houseplants that need a little love, that's all. No pranking, honest. Hoping the girl believed him as he actually hadn't had time for pranking since the end of the academy. Well except for that short time meeting Konohamaru and training him in the sexy no jutsu. Ha. Huh. Giving the boy another good once over, a small thought gracing her mind, she nodded and pointed off to her left. Along the back wall in the corner, next to the indoor aloe plants. Giving thanks and making his way between rows and rows of plants, Naruto was curious about what his former classmate had been up to. How's training going? Learn anything awesome from your sensei? Realizing she should have known she wouldn't be able to get back to her magazine, Ino snorted when she thought about her sensei. Heck no. Asuma sensei is delayed back for that. We're training Shuran he works us through drills and don't get me started on the D-ranks, such a bore. Ugh, and I've got the laziest teammates ever. 
Naruto tuned out a ranting about Shikamaru and Choji, knowing the laid-back boys were probably getting nagged to death, Naruto found what he was looking for and snagged a small bag. Turning and glancing at the aloe plants, Naruto saw and read the small note attached to the base of the plant. Hey Eno, what's this about the aloe plant being a good chakra conductor? Pausing mid-rant about not being able to cloud watch for hours on end, Eno had to think about what the boy was asking her. Shaking her head, hold on. And moving around the counter, Eno walked around until she found Naruto kneeling next to a row of plants while delicately examining the thick leaves. Kneeling down next to him and turning the plant towards her, her dad's description came to her, oh yeah. Apparently this particular variety of aloe vera has a sap that conducts chakra really well. Dad says that coating twine or thinner string with the stuff lets you use it in place of actual chakra thread and a lot less chakra taxing too. Thinking about it Naruto had another idea for it if it could conduct chakra, think you could draw a seal with it. Well, I don't see why not. Not seeing where he was going with this, Eno just shrugged while the boy turned to look at her. Were his eyes always so deeply blue? A uh, well coughing and taking the small bag of fertilizer and one of the medium-sized aloe plants, Naruto stood and grinned, I've got an idea then. Might not come to anything, but never hurts to try. Turning away from the pretty jade-eyed girl, Naruto started walking to the counter. Bouncing her way back to the counter Eno held a grin on her face, well, as long as it doesn't lead to pranks, I'm all for it. Ringing him up quickly and handing him a receipt, Eno nodded, thanks for the business, and make sure to tell Forehead that just cause she's on his team doesn't mean I've given up yet. Love was war after all. Sure thing Eno-chan, and thanks again. Giving her a carefree smile and a wave, Naruto was out the door, missing the blushing girl give him a half wave in return before the glass door closed behind him. Deciding that maybe the other blonde could be cute if he wanted, but still not close to her Sasuke-kun, she returned back to her magazine for the day. Outside it was a carefree Naruto that was already on his way home. Sure he wasn't supposed to be training, but that didn't mean he couldn't experiment. Chakra conducting meant he could probably write seals with it, and that meant more ways to make exploding notes. But, because the sap was only slightly sticky, he needed a way to produce the seal fast and the same way every time. Maybe he could coat his hand with it. But then his hand would explode too, not a good idea. Thinking hard all the way home, he missed a lavender-eyed Hayuga eyeing him from around the corner. Having watched him leave the Yamanaka shop and observe the blushing Eno, there was a worrisome conclusion being made behind those eyes. Jumping as Naruto disappeared in a shunshin, she decided it would probably be best to think about things at home. Plant in front of him on his kitchen table along with several scrolls and now three other clones besides himself, Naruto thought about his problem long and hard. The sap itself is conductive, but so it's sealing ink. It's not like we needed to make tags. Drew, plus the sap is sorta runny, it wouldn't hold the form for long or anything. One of the clones had made a slight incision on a leaf, allowing the sap to bubble out slightly. But you can only make a seal tag so big, sure wish we could pack more of them into a smaller space. Sure they could seal multiple tags or make a paper bomb with exploding tags, but that was obvious and avoidable. Wait. Naruto himself snapped his fingers and pulled out one of his sealing training scrolls. Wasn't it in this scroll that they described a way of making supermassive seal matrices super small, by packing the matrix within another chakra conductive paper scroll? Something about needing the chakra to stabilize the matrix for use. Unrolling the scroll and sifting through it in order to find what he was looking for, it was another clone over his shoulder that pointed to the section they were looking for, written by one Kashina Yu. Well that's what it says. Ooh oh I get it. Maybe we can seal the very exploding matrix inside the sap itself. Yeah yeah, and then we could put the sap anywhere. Naruto himself had a wide grin on his face. How about a mile long seal packed into a kunai or even inside a small pellet? Yeah yeah, this was definitely going to be fun. It'd take him a long time to work on to be the size he wanted, but this was for explosions and explosions were always worth the extra work. Pulling out his tools and beginning to write, it was going to be a long night for him and a hard start early morning. B. Team 7 was waiting patiently as it was coming up on their turn to receive their mission for the day. It had been another few days, and while training was great, at least Naruto and Sasuke both were starting to get antsy. So when they came forward and Aruka started naming off more D-rank missions, Naruto finally had enough and said as much. Mon Jiji. We've been training our butts off and working these chores like no one's business. Let's have a real mission for once. Missing the nod from an agreeing Sasu can flatly ignoring a protesting Aruka, Naruto was ready to match wills with the aging Hokage. Um, so your team feels like they're ready for a real mission, who watching the subtle nod from Kakashi, Suratobi sighed before pulling a scroll from the pile, well you're in luck today, we just so happen to have an escort mission available. C rank, good to get your feet wet. Handing the scroll over to Kakashi the Hokage cleared his throat, Tazuna-san, your team is here. 
from a door off to the side, an elderly man sporting a gray head of hair and matching beard stumbled into the room from the smell of alcohol, no one had to guess what was in the jug he had with him. Looking through his glasses at the team, Tazuna scoffed, what's this, I ask for a team and they give me brats. I'm the great Tazuna the bridge builder, don't I deserve some actual ninja. Tuckling and waving them all away the hokage smiled, I'm sure for just an escort mission these genin will be more than enough. You'll find they're full of surprises. Watching as Kakashi led a grumbling Tazuna away, Saratobi's eyes hardened only slightly. Outside it was an eye-smiling Kakashi who turned to his team, go ahead and head home, pack for an extended mission, and meet me at the main gate in 30. And with that, Kakashi wandered away with their client, while Naruto and the others quickly split up to pack and prepare. For Naruto this involved a quick body flicker back to his home, grabbing his pack and sealing scrolls before sealing everything into a medium-sized storage scroll. Idly twirling it in his hand before shoving it into an inner pocket on his new jacket, he took some extra time to make a quick sandwich to scarf down. Having some time to think, he was still lamenting he hadn't had time to fix his old jacket yet, but he figured after this mission, he'd finally get a new one. Orange was his favorite color after all. Taking one last look around his apartment, only pausing here and there to water his plants and say goodbye, Naruto was out the door in a flurry of leaves with only a few moments to spare. Appearing not far from the gate with a bright grin, Kakashi and the other members of Team 7 were waiting for him. A screech dying on her lips, Sakura pointed at Naruto. Since when do you know the Shunshin? He hadn't been using it at the training ground, and it wasn't like she paid attention to him after team missions either. Scrubbing his head with an odd look, again a little bum that his crush barely paid any attention to him at all, Naruto shrugged, for a while. It's a deer rank, and the lady at the library was super cool about helping me find the training scroll for it. Granted it might have been so she could get him in and out of the library faster, he couldn't keep quiet for long after all. Trying hard not to laugh at the mental image of Naruto in a library and figuring he was bluffing, Sakura scoffed and turned away, you know, I'm sure Kakashi sensei would be pretty bummed if you were getting training from another sensei. You shouldn't lie. There was no way the dead lass knew something even her Sasuke-kun didn't after all. And since he didn't know Shunshin yet, she knew their teacher hadn't thought to train them with it yet. Feelings taking a mental slap and then some, Naruto stuffed his hands in his pockets and formed up behind everyone. Kakashi leading the charge, Naruto was only slightly looking forward to the mission at this point. On the other side of their client Sasuke was looking at him with a calculating look, but didn't say much. But beyond their slow start, Team 7 started their journey to wave, enjoying the bright blue sky and peaceful trees outside of the village proper. Naruto had never been outside of the village before outside of a few times when he was younger and had been run off from the orphanage. The road currently was nice and peaceful so far at least. Sakura wasn't paying all that much attention, mentally planning how she could somehow share a tent with her love interest, while well said love interest was trying to pay attention and scan the road as per their mission, while being bored out of his mind. After about 15 minutes of walking and cresting a hill, Naruto took note of a puddle in the middle of the road. Looking up again at the clear sky and warm sun just to make sure, he again puzzled out what was niggling at the back of his mind. Kakashi sensei didn't seem bothered, then again he never seemed bothered, nose deep in his book. Sakura was a lost cause, and Sasuke seemed to be doing his best to ignore the girl. And then it clicked, it hasn't rained in weeks subtly making a clone and switching with it at the tree line just in case, Naruto figured the others had already seen through the illusion and made similar plans. In the darkness of the tree line as their group and his depelginger finally passed the puddle, Naruto was ready to admit that maybe his prank senses were letting him down. At least until two men poofed out from the puddle, wrapping Kakashi sensei in chains and tearing him apart. Knowing that if he could see through that lame illusion then his sensei for sure was fine, Naruto made ready to jump back into the fray if his clone failed its task. Look at that Gozu, their sensei was quick to put down. The first ninja bearing a horned Hitai ate bloated. It just leaves the brats to clean up Maizu. Lunging forward, the second horned ninja wasn't fully prepared for the previously frozen blonde to charge forward, attempting to tackle and hold Gozu around the waist. Ha 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 ha, give it up kid, you're 100 years too early to take me down. Seals around his wrist glowing unnoticed to Gozu, the Naruto clone grinned, it's been a blast. Katsu. And then there was fire and light. What Naruto never thought to take into account as he made several hundred feet worth of explosive seals along a scroll and wove it all into a bracelet was that each tag could and would build upon each other as they were chained together. So while a normal exploding tag alone may take off a limb or partially singe a more experienced and prepared ninja, this more exponentially powerful seal array would only feed back in on itself by a much stronger value. End result. A 10-foot wide and 3-foot crater was instantly dug into the road where Gozu used to exist. Maizu was also almost immediately tossed like a rag doll into the trees, spine snapping where he was tossed first into and then through the first tree that tried to arrest his momentum. 
when he finally did come to a stop several dozen meters away, he would mercifully already be unconscious. Not that he had any chance of returning to ninja duties ever again between the burns, spinal damage and multiple broken bones. Back on the street the shock wave had been enough to toss Akura and Sasuke both several feet, while Kakashi had thought it prudent to shunshin away with Tizuna once he saw Naruto enacting his own plan. Kakashi would have to lecture Naruto on restraint in the future, but privately he was proud that the kid was taking this seriously. Though, as he walked back onto the road with their very shaken client, he still had to chuckle at the overkill. Leaping from the trees with a grin on his face, Naruto made several clones to go find the other enemy ninja. Holding a thumbs up to Kakashi he was completely proud of himself, alright, score 1 for team 7. Cackling like a madman, he never saw the punch that tossed him into the ground. What the hell was that dope? You could have killed all of us with that. Of all the stupid, ignorant, useless Akura was building herself up for a long rant before Kakashi stepped in with a hand on her shoulder. Mama, first before you berate him, Naruto-kun, please explain your reasoning. To Kakashi, this was exactly the type of teachable moment they needed. All of them. He could see the look of astonishment on Sasuke's face, no longer able to hide behind a veil of being above it all. He hadn't reacted nearly as fast to the threat after all. Picking himself up with an angry grumble, the now sour Yuzumaki looked directly at his sensei, well, first I figured that the puddle was a fake, cause you know, it hasn't rained in weeks, and any puddle should be gone in this heat. And I figured if I could figure that out, with everyone else being smarter than me, then it should have been really obvious to you all. So I figured with my clones I could take out the threat while my teammates could protect the client. Nodding and secretly still proud of the Yuzumaki, Kakashi still had to lecture the boy and advise all of them. So do you know where you messed up? Ooh, I didn't expect the explosion to be that big. Shaking his head Kakashi motioned to his two teammates, did you consider at all that your teammates actually didn't notice the puddle was a trap? Seeing the boy shake his head Kakashi continued, not only did you not communicate with your team about the possible threat, yes, your tactic could have ended with injury to your team and the client. Thankfully that's what I'm here for, to cover for your inexperience and to help you learn from these mistakes. Seeing the boy lose his energy at the admonishment, Kakashi smiled internally, your decision making was okay up to a point, but communication is key to teamwork, keep that in mind from now on. You can't assume everyone is smarter than you and will make the same decisions as you. But that Kakashi turned to their now sweating client, and you Tizuna, we have much to talk about. Walking a bit away from the others, Kakashi was going to find out why the demon brothers were after a bridge builder from a small country. Oh, how do you pull off that explosion in the first place? Exploding Tag's team, give it a try sometime. Now really upset but determined to make up for it eventually, Naruto wasn't in the mood for Sasuke's I'm better than you attitude. You don't have to be rude to Sasuke-kun just cause you got chewed out, Baka. Throwing his hands up in the air as his clones came back and dumped the paralyzed body of the other demon brother at his feet. Bound and gagged, the clones all saluted before dispersing themselves. There the three genin of Team 7 sat and waited, Sakura trying to stroke Sasuke's ego by saying how he would have taken both enemy ninja down without nearly killing them in the process, while Sasuke himself was looking at Naruto in a new light. Sure he had thought his training wouldn't bridge the gap between them at all, but now he could see that at least within him was a competent teammate. Not like a certain fangirl. Maybe he should start working on those chakra exercises as well. Walking back to the group with a pale Tizuna, Kakashi was all smiles, okay troops, here's the deal. Tazuna apparently has lied about why he needed his escort, and now we have a decision to make. Wave is currently under the heel of a greedy shipping magnate by the name of Gato, and Tazuna is building a bridge in order to get past his shipping embargo. In order to stop the bridge being built, Gato has apparently hired mercenaries to kill Tazuna and prevent the bridge from being built. If these two, the Demon Brothers, are involved that means this is at least an B-rank mission. So we can turn back right now, or we can continue on at our own risk. Not even hesitating Naruto threw up a fist and missed the chance to kick some major ninja butt and save people. No way, I'm in. Nodding Sasuke agreed with Naruto, we're ninja of the leaf, we don't get to abandon a mission once it's been given. Sakura being of a different mind but not wanting to go against Sasuke nodded, yeah, there's no way any ninja are a match for us. Nodding with some pride Kakashi turned to Tazuna, Welp, you heard them, we'll continue on with this mission. However, I will be making a report and when this is over, there will be an adjustment. If the bridge is completed, we should be able to pay it no problem. While happy the ninja wouldn't abandon him, he wasn't sure how they would repay them when all this was over. Kakashi took note finally of Maizu's bound and gagged form, grinning at the young Yuzumaki. Good job on the capture Naruto. Give me a moment to prepare a scroll and send up a flare. They were still close to the village, and Anbu squad should be able to perform a quick pickup. 
which, after penning a quick scroll to describe Naruto's defeat and capture of the enemy ninja, along with the situation they found themselves in and their intention to continue, Kakashi sent up an emergency flare that he pulled from a pocket in his jonin vest. Once that was done he performed some quick hand seals and thrust his hand at the ground, Uchiya no Jutsu. From a poof of smoke a small dog was sitting and waiting patiently for the masked ninja to give it orders. Tucking the scroll into the pug's collar, Kakashi nodded, Anbu should be here soon, watch over this guy and give them the scroll when they get here. Moving the ninja off into the bushes and out of sight, Kakashi Zuma nodded, Gotcha, wait and play babysitter. Tuckling and turning to his team, Kakashi motioned for them to continue finally, Welp, let's get going team. We have a lot of ground to cover. Hey hey, Kakashi-sensei, can you teach us that? Naruto was as always quick to try to learn something new. Maybe one day, but you have a long way to go before trying to summon anything. Sure Naruto had the chakra for it, but considering his parentage, he wasn't going to step on those toes. Just in case someone else had a plan already. Ah fine. Also, Naruto, from here on, can you create clones to follow us in the tree line? I'd rather have some warning just in case. Give the boy some practice in using the clones in different ways. Which, considering the light shining in his eyes, Naruto hadn't even thought to use the clones as a kind of early warning system before. Sure thing sensei. Making his seal and disappearing in a fog bank worth of smoke, three dozen clones sat in the road. Without a word, all but one leapt into the trees. Looking at the Naruto who was with them, Sasuke voiced a question, how will we know you're the real one? Couldn't someone kill a clone and transform into you? Nodding Naruto figured that was true, well sure, but you're my team, so ask me an easy question only I would know, like what's the best flavor of ramen? Uh, Naruto, you like all ramen. It was Sakura who spoke up, Sasuke not getting it right away. Exactly, all ramen is my favorite. Seeing the kids begin to actually make plans and feed off one another, Kakashi decided not to chime in just yet. It had taken a little bit, but it seemed they were starting to take things a little more seriously as a team. Even Sakura was starting to use her head a bit, even if it took some coaxing. The rest of the afternoon was the team traversing the countryside making plans and keeping an eye on the road. Though no bandits or enemy ninja made any appearances, they all were on alert as they came closer to the land of Wave. From the water border where they met a waiting boatman who nervously took them from the mainland across the fog-covered water. They finally made landfall in Wave itself as evening approached with no issues. Looking pointedly at Naruto who gave a thumbs up, Kakashi motioned the team forward, moving quietly through the foggy forest. And it was moving through the mists that a nervous Sakura jumped at a rustling bush, launching a kunai into the cover. Everyone looking at her and waiting, she wordlessly went to investigate, coming back with a snow-white bunny. Laughing nervously Sakura tried to console the terrified animal, guess I'm a little jumpy. Sasuke however was looking at it more closely, wait, it's still summer, no rabbit should be snow-white like that. Hearing something large cutting through the air, Kakashi was already pulling Tazuna to the ground, everyone down. Hitting the dirt, each of the genin had different thoughts as a sword just as tall as probably Kakashi himself flew overhead, burying itself into the trunk of a tree behind them. Silently landing on its edge, a foreign ninja stood watching them all. Heh, no wonder the demon brothers failed, up against the famous copycat ninja himself. Bandages over his mouth and bare-chested, the mist ninja was glaring down at the Kanoha ninja. Though it looks like the mighty have fallen quite far, they got you babysitting brats now. Defend the client and don't get involved, this opponent is way out of your league. Only moving once the three genin encircled Tizuna, Kakashi turned his full attention to his enemy, demon of the bloody mists, Zabuza. What rock did you crawl out from? Making a single sign, a thick mist began to roll in, you'll regret not retreating when you could. The mist now so thick their visibility was barely a foot, and Zabuza's voice echoed from all directions, I'll introduce you to my silent killing technique. Will it be your hearts? Neck, spine, liver. So many instant kill strikes, so little time. All three younger members of Team 7 were doing their best to watch and protect their charge, while Kakashi had his senses on high alert for when Zabuza would make his appearance. Shifting his head back and forth, a subtle movement in the mist had him turning and lunging with all the speed he had. Somehow appearing among them, the mist cleared enough that the genin could see Zabuza winding up for a killing strike. Two bad kitties. Time to die. Being kicked in the side and tossed away onto the nearby lake surface before he could strike, he was set upon by Kakashi. Laughing and defending himself, the lack of concentration allowing the mist to clear, Zabuza taunted Kakashi, how does it feel, to once be so feared to have to be a glorified babysitting now? You'd be surprised, one day those kids are gonna surpass both of us. Dodging the oversized blade and connecting with a palm strike, he frowned as the sensation was all wrong. Wait, water. It's heavy. Not being fast enough to pull off a substitution, Kakashi was engulfed in Zabuza's water prison. Willing to gloat now that his biggest threat was captured, Zabuza laughed, ha 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 how weak you've become. 
This is the fabled S-Class Ninja, maybe Kanoha needs to rethink its rankings. Watching their sensei come under fire, Naruto frowned before coming up with a rough but quick plan. Sasuke, we're gonna save sensei. Pulling out a few shuriken in a poof of smoke, Naruto relayed his quick plan. Alright dub, let's see if this works then. Sakura, watch Tazuna. What are you doing, run, you can't fight him. Kakashi tried to impress on the kids to take the client and run. He might be able to fight his way out without the kids to worry about. Sasuke and Naruto are run forward together, while Zabuza makes a dozen water clones, it is Naruto who counters with his own, there's no way we'd leave you behind sensei. Letting Naruto take the clone Sasuke leapt and inhaled deeply. Preparing his chakra before exhaling his signature technique, the fireball was tinged on wide at the edges. Just behind it traveled a hastily thrown Fuma shuriken. It took but a moment for the Ichiha Saiyan to land on the lake's edge, watching the plan unfold. Zabuza was forced to build a hasty barrier in the form of a water wall, in order to block the Gakaku no Jutsu, the steam nearly hid the shuriken just behind it. Bringing his faithful sword around to block it, Zabuza was not prepared for the blonde that transformed in place of the foldable weapon. Reaching forward and grabbing Zabuza's arm, the single exploding seal on the back of the clone's hand began to glow. Teach you to underestimate us asshole. Katsu. Having to choose between holding Kakashi and losing an arm or retreating, Zabuza decided retreat was the better option. Dropping the water prison and performing a hasty substitution, Zabuza was more than a little irritated as the clone was still standing there giving him the finger. Teach you to underestimate the greatest prankster alive. Ruffling the brave blonde who was shakily standing on the lake's water, he walked forward, it's all me from here on, watch your sensei work for a bit. Moving his headband to expose his Sharingan eye, Kakashi was now deathly serious. You're gonna fight me and protect those kids, don't make me laugh. Performing hand seals in quick succession Zabuza called out his technique, missing Kakashi copying him, Suiten. Suiten no Jutsu. Twin techniques rose from the lake, intertwining before cancelling each other other. Ha, think you're clever, think your cheap tricks can keep up with an original do you? Kakashi however wasn't a jounin for nothing, for every technique he had ever copied he had made sure to master each and every one. Knowing Zabuza was going to run another water dragon, it was child's play to start sealing before him and finish the technique a few seconds ahead of him, perhaps, you should practice a bit more. Launching his own attack, it was Zabuza who was launched across the lake surface and blasted into the trunk of a tree. Recovering his donated eye and exhausted, Kakashi moved to finish off his opponent. This was preempted, however, by several senbin sinking into Zabuza's neck. Appearing like a whisper, a masked Kiri ninja appeared next to the demon of the bloody mists. Bound politely to the team of Kanohinin, the androgynous figure stood up, thank you for the assist, I've been hunting this fugitive for some time. It will be good to return him to our village. Sighing and standing back, knowing he couldn't fight anymore, Kakashi nodded, it would have been nice to have an assist earlier, Hunter-san. With a shrug, the apparent hunter kneeled and grabbed hold of Zabuza's body, performing a body flicker and disappearing with the corpse. Once they were gone, it was a tired Kakashi who turned back to the team, well, gotta say, that was exciting. That was as far as he got before he fell face first into the water. Ah, Kakashi sensei. Naruto ran to pick their sensei up to prevent him from drowning. Several clones coming from their hiding places in order to help. The shaking Tazuna and Sakura came forward, the older man wiping his brow, you lot really are the real deal. Come on, my home isn't far, we can rest up for the night. Sakura was quick to check over their sensei, his large body dwarfing Naruto almost completely. Looking him over and checking his eye by opening a closed eyelid and checking his breathing, Sakura eventually sighed and nodded, looks like chakra exhaustion. Sensei should be fine after some rest. Nodding Naruto motioned to Sasuke who moved to the head of the group, well, lead the way to Zuna-san, we'll get you home. Well Sasuke wouldn't admit to taking orders from Naruto, ever, at the moment even he could admit that the blonde was trustworthy. And maybe they were wrong about him being the dead last after all. So with some newfound respect in his heart, Sasuke walked next to Tazuna as he led them to his home, and a happy daughter who was more than happy to take them all in, after seeing her father safe and sound at home. The night came to an end with Team 7 all in one piece, though each with different thoughts on their minds about just what this mission had come out to so far. Story start, but the start, Kakashi awoke to a dark but comfortable room. Mind racing it took a few moments before he could piece together what had led to him being laid up in a bed in an unknown place. The mission, the battle, winning, and overusing his cursed eye. It all came back to him in a flash, and he groaned in half embarrassment. To think he'd exhaust himself too quickly in front on his students. Well, they lived to tell the tale, so he could live with it for now. Though when they got back to the village he was sure to hear it from Asuma and the others when he filed his report. With a tired groan the exhausted ninja rolled and rose to his feet, shuffling out the door and down the stairs where he could hear people. Downstairs it was three bored genin who were waiting on the condition of their sensei to improve. 
while Naruto had wanted to train like normal, he figured that since they were in unfamiliar territory, that he should probably wait for some orders for once. Sakura was helping Tazuna's daughter Tsunami prepare lunch with what supplies they had. Sasuke was waiting just as Naruto was, not entirely sure how they should proceed. Tazuna had assured them that he wouldn't need protection within the village of Wave, but they were all nervous regardless. However as they heard a thumping from the stairs, all three students heaved a relieved sigh as their sensei made an appearance, though slow. Well well well, it's good to see everyone up and so chipper. Kakashi was in good spirits at least, seeing his students all happy and in one piece. Come with me, we have much to talk about. Thanking Tsunami for the help while he was out, he ushered his students out of the house and into a clearing not far away. Arranging all three of them before him, Kakashi got serious for a moment, I think it's time to get a little more hands-on with your training. Seeing each of the kids focus on him a bit more, he nodded with some pride, I'm proud of you Naruto for taking initiative to learn more of the basics and continuing chakra control and movement techniques, I would have thought our resident bookworm would have done the same. Looking pointedly at Sakura, she raised her hand. But Kakashi sensei, why would we need to continue exercises after the academy? Motioning to Naruto, Kakashi hoped that maybe having an example would put things in perspective. Because first, you should always be working towards improvement. And second, many of these basic exercises have practical uses. Like tree walking and water walking. Notice yesterday how Zabuza and myself continued our fight on the lake, or how Naruto was able to reposition using the trees. You never know what skill will have the most use and when, so it's best to learn all that you can, and practice, practice, practice. Plus, it'll do wonders for building up your chakra reserves. Much like a muscle, using it will build it up. Turning and motioning to the line of trees behind him, he looked mainly at Sakura and Sasuke, your goal for the next week is to be able to reach the top of the tree with just your chakra. And not just once, you must continue the training until you can do so-so hours at a time without getting tired. This will increase both your control and your capacity. Turning to Naruto Kakashi nodded, well I understand you have tree walking down, I noticed you're still working on the water walking skill. Uh yeah, I can hold it for short times, but varying my chakra still takes some concentration. Nodding and expecting the answer, Kakashi motioned back towards the village, your job this week is to watch over the bridge building, practice the exercise while at the bridge, and make safe use of your clones in the meantime. Got it. Hi. Kakashi waved him off as he himself turned and trudged back to the house, then I'm going back to bed, chakra exhaustion is no joke, and I need to be in the best form I can be before the week is over. Not seeing the need for urgency, Sakura again raised her hand, why is that sensei? Kakashi looked back to them with a gleam in his eye, because that hunter nin was a fake. Normally hunter cut off the head and burn the body. Considering also the weapon used to eliminate Zabuza, I have a suspicion that the hunter was actually Zabuza's accomplice. But waving them off Kakashi turned away, but all we can do is prepare as much as possible and be ready for when they return. So saying, their sensei walked back towards their client's home. Standing there for a moment, Naruto himself turned to rush off to his assigned task. But it was Sasuke's voice that stopped him. Don't know. Naruto. Any advice about the tree walking technique? Well Sasuke would normally never think to ask the dead last for anything. The last few days had shown that out here, Naruto was anything but. Naruto had the skill and worked three times as hard as anyone else for it, and Sasuke could respect that. Scratching his neck Naruto nodded, well, usually you see me getting a running start at trees right? You have to put the right amount of chakra at your feet to stick as well, to much, and you blow off, and to little and you don't stick. But I noticed after a while that if you instead sit at the base of a tree and try sticking yourself first, it takes a little longer, but you get a better feel for how much or little chakra you need. Shrugging, Naruto did have the benefit of being able to spam clones for something like this. Nodding and turning away from his teammate Sasuke got ready to practice, alright, just you wait, I'm gonna catch up to you, and we'll see who stays ahead by the end of the week. Maybe having a rival wasn't so bad. In your dream Sasuke. Naruto had a grin on his face though as he set off through the trees, not having a problem navigating towards the large bridge in the distance. Doing his duty as instructed Naruto made good time to the bridge while traveling over the trees and rooftops, before dropping to the ground and landing not far away from the construction team. Raising a hand to wave at a surprise to Zuna, Naruto was still all grins, Kakashi sensei finally woke up, gave me orders to come watch over you while getting some training done. Heh. Waving the kid off but nodding as he was just doing his job, Tazuna turned back to his crew who were waiting for some orders themselves, knock yourself out kid, just try not to get underfoot alright. Leaping towards the side of the bridge Naruto crossed his fingers, no sweat Tazuna-san. Cage bush and no jutsu. Pumping more chakra than he probably should have, a few hundred clones all fell to the water below to begin training. Satisfied that they were doing just that, Naruto walked up the support pillar of this section of bridge before sitting and keeping an eye out, completely out of the way like he was asked. 
Eyes wide and staring at the slip of a kid who apparently really was a ninja, of the men whispered to Tazuna, you really got some ninja to come protect us to finish the bridge. Nodding Tazuna slapped the blueprint on their hastily put together work table, sure did, and these kids did a super job protecting me and getting me here safe. I trust them, and you should too. Now, here's the schedule for today. Azuna wasn't worried about the black and orange clad boy who was watching over him, completely confident the kid would protect him just like he said he would, so he would do his own job and complete this bridge. Day to night, night to day, four grueling days of training and watching their client went by in almost a blink. And through it all Team 7 kept their moral up while their teacher regained his strength. This night however found everyone at the dinner table, Naruto contributing by surprise by showing up with an armload of fish. And be a freeloader, and clones are useful for more than just blowing stuff up. Tsunami was more than happy to take the extra provisions and cook a much larger meal. Sitting and enjoying some rice it was Kakashi who warned his high-spirited students, remember, tomorrow is most likely crunch day, so everyone is to be at the bridge, which means rest and recovery tonight. While everyone on the team knew who that was aimed at, Naruto had the decency to blush and agree. It was however ill-tempered Inari, Tsunami's son, that finally had enough, how can you be so happy? You can't win against Gato, he'll crush you just like he's crushed everyone else. You're going to die, don't you care? Pulling up his mask after taking a bite, ignoring the hearts in Tsunami's eyes, Kakashi sighed, I don't think you'll need to worry about us, I've dealt with worse than Gato in my time. Frowning as once between the three of them, none of the genin had seen Kakashi's face this time, it was Naruto that focused on the here and now, yeah yeah, we're super awesome, there's no way we're going to let some wanted dictator stop us. Full of confidence Naruto fully believed their team would pull through. They had Kakashi after all too. Standing up and pointing the frustrated kid was now fully angry, I don't want to hear it from some coddled ninja. I bet you've never suffered once in your life at all, surrounded by your friends and family, never having to worry about if you'll have to eat that night or if some bandits are going to come through your home at night. This is the real world, why don't you try living in it? While Sakura and Sasuke didn't know much about Naruto's past, they both knew that he had been treated differently than the rest of them. So even they were a little shocked at just how quickly the happy look drained from Naruto's face, replaced with a cold glacial look that was better suited on an angry Hayuga. Maybe, you should consider not everyone who's happy actually had a happy life. I know what it's like to suffer, but at least you still have some of your parents, people who love you. That's what's most important, isn't it? Voice and tone cold, Naruto stood and bowed to Tsunami, thank you Tsunami-san, I'll be leaving for a while. No one bothered to stop the blonde as he made for the door, opening and closing it in a fluid motion. Sakura made to go after him, but Kakashi settled her down with a wave of his hand, let him go blow off some steam. He'll be alright. He's just mad that I'm right, so childish. Inari chose to speak up again, but the look sent his way by the Team 7 sensei froze him in place. It's not fully my story to tell, but Naruto was an orphan since birth. No parents, no family, no friends. It's only recently that he's started forming any bonds with people. Do you think you could be as happy and carefree as he is, growing up in such a way? Kakashi of course, couldn't get into the why his life had been that way, or the worst things that had happened to him. That was up to his wayward student to bring up himself. Turning to the door with a contemplative look, Sakura re-evaluated her thoughts about her teammate, while Sasuke turned back to his meal. Nothing he could do about it now after all. Naruto however was venting his frustration in the best way he knew how, creating dozens of clones and pounding away at himself, literally. Long into the night he trained and practiced before eventually the day's normal training caught up with him and he passed out in a heap below a scarred tree. The full moon watched over him as eventually the mists concealed him from the rest of the world for the night. It was in his dreams however that things began to go all kinds of weird. Normally Naruto would enjoy a wonderful dream involving never-ending Raymond, or maybe after a particularly stressful day, something that involved Raymond and particular classmates from his time at the academy. Tonight however, no perversions, but instead he found himself in a dank sewer, ankle deep in water. Well this doesn't look good, maybe I ate some bad fish. Already feeling guilty about insulting Tsunami's amazing cooking, Naruto began to wander aimlessly through those wet halls. It all felt just slightly off, like a place he didn't know but should. But he walked still, for maybe hours or days, before he found himself in a cavernous space, where as far as he could see were bars wider than he was tall. Walking up to one, there was a simple piece of paper with a word seal written on it, but no more. Just where is this? Come and find out. A giant red claw reached out, trying to impale him. The bars closed ranks automatically and kept him from being torn to shreds, but Naruto was already looking up, past the claws, past the arm and into the baleful red eyes of a beast of legend that he never though he would see alive. You. You're the Kaiubi aren't you? Growling low and moving away from the bars, they too opened up as his malice towards his container settled into something barely above annoyance. 
so the little monkey can connect the dots. Truly an accomplishment for such a simpleton. The ageless demon was not impressed. So many of his previous hosts were much much more fearsome than this whelp. Yeah well, I'm not the one who's locked away in this little monkey, now am I? Big bad Kaiubi, locked away in a kid. Naruto was scared, he could admit that, but he would rather spit in the eye of the kami, before admitting it to this asshole. So this kid had fire, just like his mother, Muhahaha. So he has teeth after all. Tell me whelp, you've started taking life serious, but is it enough yet? Think you can take me? He'd love a challenge right now, and tricking this kid into fighting him for control so early would be a boon. Sure they could speak already because the boy's control over his own chakra had improved a great deal, but it was nowhere near enough to truly deal with his yet. Yeah right, I'd love to say yeah, but I've got a long way to go. Firming up his resolve, Naruto held out a fist to the beast, just you wait though, one day I'm going to be the strongest, and when I am, me and you are going to have it out. You got it. Challenging the strongest of the tailed beasts, Naruto was if nothing else, ambitious. You amuse me. I'll take that challenge, and I'll even help you. You are the container to the strongest Biju in existence. I deserve no less than to have the strongest container. So I will heal you when needed and occasionally gift you my chakra. But you better continue your training and build your own strength, lest my power consume you. Smiling wide with rows of sharp fangs flashing, the bloodthirst in the Kyuubi's eyes was very apparent. Not looking this gift horse in the mouth, Naruto nodded, oh I'll get strong alright, and you'll see, I'm going to prove everyone wrong about me, even you. No longer caring and ready to be done with the child, the Kaiubi turned away, time will tell whelp, but perhaps you should consider waking. Before your throat is slit. Wah. And Naruto's mind fell. Morning however found a new occupant in the clearing, a black-haired beauty who stumbled upon the blonde bomber much by accident. Recognizing him however, they waffled between ending the threat or sparing him, before deciding it wasn't his decision to make. So, taking pity on the boy currently soaked in the morning dew, they shook his shoulder, excuse me, but you probably shouldn't be sleeping outside here. How was it? Through the haze of his dream, Naruto blearily opened his eyes and looked upon the person above him. Uh, hello there. What's your name? Curious about his watcher, Naruto sat up. My name is Haku, this is certainly an odd place to sleep. Why are you out here all alone? Oh uh, I was training. Got a little carried away I guess. I'm a ninja here to protect the bridge builder. Finally rolling to his feet and stretching, his back stiff from sleeping on the cold ground overnight. What are you doing out here? Pointing at a basket full of herbs, Haku smiled, collecting herbs for a friend of mine, say, would you like to help me? Deciding he didn't have anything better to do at the moment, and by the looks of the sun he had some time before he needed to get back, Naruto nodded, sure thing, I'll help out, show me what we're looking for. Looking to take his time, Naruto didn't spam clones for this task. So he set to work, listening to Haku intently as the apparent young woman showed him what herbs were useful and which ones were no more than weeds. It wasn't long before the basket was full and Haku was standing ready to go. Thank you Naruto-san for the help. No sweat miss, all in a day's work for a ninja. Seeming to think something over for a moment, Haku asked a question, when I asked you why you were out here, you told me you were training. Can I ask, why are you training so hard? Keeping their motivation to themselves, they were genuinely curious. Well to get strong of course. I want to be Hokage one day, and I have to be the strongest to do that. The answer was quick and truthful. His goal and dream always on his mind. Is that strength just for you however? Or for others? Pausing at Naruto's slightly confused looks, Haku clarified, to me, real strength comes from defending those precious to you. Strength for yourself is to selfish and can't take you further than protecting those you love. Think of your Hokage, don't you think he loves all of your village? Does he toil that much harder to make sure his loved ones don't have to suffer? Turning away slightly ready to leave, Haku nodded to the thinking boy, something to think about. Yeah, yeah it is. Sure, the Kaiubi wanted Naruto to be the strongest of the strong, and Naruto wanted to be strong in order to become Hokage. But was being strong all there was? Or was having someone precious to protect part of the equation too? Unbidden, the faces of Iruka and the Ichirakus entered his mind. Looking up at the departing beauty, Naruto grinned, thanks for the advice, Haku-chan, you're a nice lady. Able to enjoy a bit of teasing, Haku looked back at the boy with a smile, no worries. Pausing for effect, an effeminate boy tilted his head, and I'm a boy, Naruto-kun. Continuing on his way without another word, Haku left a flabbergasted but smiling Naruto. Who, after shaking himself, realized he was now running late. Shit, time to get back. And off like a shot, Naruto was up and into the trees, making a beeline for Tazuna's home. Making great time or so he thought, Naruto was unprepared for the scream that reached his ears. Making a squad of a dozen clones, they all vanished in a swirl of leaves. Inari was standing in the hallway of his home, trembling but starting down to warn down samurai holding his mom hostage. 
Scared and worried everything was going to fall apart again, tears were already tracking down Inari's face as one of the thugs held his mom against him, LL let my mom go. The unburdened thug came forward, grin on his face, normally I'd complain Gato doesn't pay us enough, but with this little treat, I think I'll be satisfied with today. Pulling his sword as he turned away from his cohort, he made a show of pointing the rusted weapon at the barely standing boy, don't you worry kid, your mom will be seeing you soon, after we're done with her. That'd be a long while from now, but kid didn't need to worry about that. Over my dead body. Before he could turn completely to look at who called out, a sandal-clad foot connected with the back of his head. Disoriented and dizzy, he wasn't prepared for two sets of arms to toss him back out the front door and into the yard, where he was immediately pummeled by a dozen waiting clones. Inari was suddenly in his mother's embrace, both crying and assuring themselves that the other was okay and unhurt. Naruto watched them with an odd look on his face, before turning away and knowing it was time to get to the bridge. Seeing their last-minute savior go, Inari wrestled free and reached out to the boy, wait. Don't go, Gato will win. He'll always win. Just run, let's run. Scoffing, Naruto thumbed his headband with a wide grin on his face, already mindset in battle mode, I'm a proud ninja of the leaf. We don't run with things get tough. You've gotta stand up for yourself eventually Inari, or deadbeats like Gato will keep walking all over you. I leave some clones, you'll both be safe here. But that Naruto was out and into the trees, leaving behind several clones who were busy tying up the thugs. Hey Tsunami-san. Wanna take a turn kicking the shit out of these guys. Hey idiot, language, she's a lady. Are you calling an idiot, idiot? And she doesn't mind, do you Tsunami-san? You, I'm calling you an idiot you idiot. Watching clones of the boy literally argue with themselves, it was Inari who was already running out of the door quickly, a plan slowly forming in the boy's mind, I'm going to get help mom, I'll be back as soon as I can. And he too was gone. The absurdity of everything that had happened within the last 15 minutes finally catching up to her, Tsunami, decided it might be best to just roll with it. Looking upon the waking samurai, Tsunami came outside hoisting a cast iron pan, hold them still boys, I have a lot of frustration to let out. After several identical cheers, only pain screaming was heard. Naruto had already created another few dozen clones who had spread out as they neared the bridge, and the sight he came upon was not a welcome one. Like Kakashi-sensei had thought, Zabuza was up and in fighting form again, holding off the leaf down in with his massive cleaver. However, while Sakura was protecting the bridge builder it was Sasuke who was fighting against a masked fake hunter nin, within a dome of strange looking mirrors, Naruto made a last leap before sliding to watch Sasuke's back, a kunai in each hand blocking or diverting senmen. Heh, thought you'd be done by now Sasuke, what's taking you so long with this loser? Anting but watching the hunter's movements, Sasuke wanting to be irritated with a blonde but just couldn't. For once happy to see the knucklehead. Oh you know, wanted to give you a chance to see how much more awesome I am than you. Spinning to deflect a needle from his left, Naruto was already moving to his right to defend his blind spot. Ah uh, yeah sure. Just admit you missed me. Having a hard time keeping up, Naruto was about to signal his clones start getting expletive. Before you do anything, know that those mirrors took my full strength fireball and didn't budge. We're going to need something with a lot more power. Oh I've got something alright. Figured out how to direct the blast of my clones wrist bombs now. A creepy chuckle leaving his mouth, Naruto was ready to show off. Seeing the boy starting to rally, Haku blurred between all of the mirrors again, readying more senbon, while a half-hand seal formed even more made of ice. I'm sorry, but I can't let you interfere with Zabuza sama's plans. Letting loose the weapons, it was with a heavy heart that Haku put these boys down. Knowing he wasn't going to be able to recall enough clones in time, purely on instinct Naruto grabbed Sasuke pulling him under himself, while three clones burst into existence. The next moment Naruto knew nothing but pain the vision in his left eye going dark in the same moment. Under him Sasuke barely had time to register what had happened, but the feeling of something wet dripping on his face was a clue that things were not going as planned. Amna team, why don't you toughen up a bit, I'm not going to always be here to save your hide after all. Left eye a ruined mess from a needle entering through the side of his face, the rest of his body looked like a pincushion. And while the other clones what taken enough hits and dispersed, Sasuke himself was unharmed. In the end, he decided to protect you. Truly he must have been a good friend to you. It's a pity that it has to end this way goodbye. Conjuring more ice needles, Haku ready to end this. Feeling something inside of him change and feeling a heat in his eyes that he'd never felt before, Sasuke didn't feel like stopping the hot tears breaking free, you dope. You aren't supposed to sacrifice yourself for me. I've been shitty to you, all of us have. You're supposed to be Hokage one day aren't you? You can't die if you're gonna make that happen can you? Feeling his clones closing in, a strange calm washing over him, Naruto nodded, you're right team. I can't let it end here. 
Grabbing a fistful of the red Aitichiha's shirt, Naruto heaved the boy out and threw the gaps in the dome to land at Sakura's and Tazuna's feet, cause my job is to protect my precious friends, and that includes you. Starting from his navel, Chakra exploded forth from Naruto, forcing loose all of the Senban and evaporating the ice versions as well. In an instant every mirror suddenly had a Naruto palming its surface, volatile seal bracelets glowing. You want me dead huh? Well you better make it flashy. The explosions were properly directed this time and blew apart the ice mirrors with ease. One of which held the real Haku who was sent tumbling end over end before coming to a shaky stop on legs that barely supported him. What are you? You shouldn't be standing. Mass cracked but not broken, the fake hunter only had a moment to raise his head. Appearing directly in front of him in a body flicker was a glowing red ninja with a dark eye reforming by the moment and his fist was already crashing into his face. I'm gonna be the next Hokage. And I'll be damned if I watch anyone in front of me die. And a fresh chakra coursing through him his fist crashed into and through Haku's face mask, shattering it and tossing the now barely conscious boy on his back in a heap. Seeing his opponent down, it took a few moments for Naruto to heave a few breaths before finally calming down, the angry red chakra slowly leaving him as well. He was tired and his eye ached, but he was happy to note his loss of vision was only temporary. Guess the bastard fox was good on its word. Walking up to the groggy boy, Naruto frowned, so it's you. What about protecting your precious people? Sighing and spent, Haku had for all purposes seemed to give up, Zabuza is my most precious person. He raised me, gave me a home, saved me from the loneliness crushing down on me from the savageness of this world. Looking at Naruto, at something deeper in him, he sighed, you know it as well, what people are willing to do to others who don't fit in, who don't belong. My mother was a victim of the bloodline purges in the mists. I only lived because I killed my father to save my own life. All I have is Abusa who I considered like a real father, and so I became his tool to repay that. And now I'm broken. And a broken tool can only be thrown away. Ready to bite his own tongue if needed, Haku was ready for his end. Well screw that. You said only the truly strong get so in order to protect their precious people right. Well if Zabuza is so precious to you, you've got to be just as precious to him. As a person, not as a tool. And someone like that wouldn't want you to give up so easily. You're just a tool, you're special to him. Not far away and deep in their own fight, Kakashi and Zabuza were both tired and nearing the end of their limits. They were however listening to a very impassioned blonde. Your brat needs to learn when to leave well enough alone. Little shit. You don't know the half of it. He has a way of getting under people's skin. How about we end this then, with one last original move. Barking out a laugh, Zabuza nodded, an original move from you. Why I'm honored, let's see what you got Kakashi. Breaking away to ready his blade, Zabuza was met with what sounded like thousands of birds chirping. Crouched and holding his right arm, Kakashi had wreathed his hand in lightning, Sharingan eye blazing for the extra reaction time, meet my one original move, the Chidori. Lunging forward at breakneck speeds, Kakashi was aiming straight for the heart this time. Ha! So simple. I'll cleave you in two. At least, that was what Zabuza wanted, but that was thwarted by several dogs latching onto his extremities. What's this? While well, I may get tunnel vision with this move, I've learned to work through that weakness. This is goodbye Zabuza. Thrusting his hand forward Kakashi was unprepared for the body that came in between the two. While Naruto had been focused on his teacher, amazed at the special technique he was using, it was Haku who was watching the scene, while Naruto's own voice was ringing in his head. Mustering up the last of his strength and making one last flicker, he interposed himself between Kakashi and Zabuza, taking the attack to his chest. Silence reigned in that moment. All of the Team 7 genin surprised that the broken boy could still move enough to sacrifice himself in an attempt to protect who he considered his father figure. But, it hadn't been enough, Kakashi's hand and arm piercing far enough through Haku to also break through Zabuza's sword that he had raised in defense and into his own heart as well. You idiot, you were supposed to stay down and live. Not die with an old failure like me. Tears tracking down his face, Zabuza limply fell to his knees, pulling himself free from Kakashi's hand. Pulling his arm free and recognizing the battle was over, the leaf down and covered his Sharingan eye and laid the dying boy in Zabuza's lap. Turning away, Kakashi could respect a worthy opponent at least in the end and started walking away. Naruto however had come to stand next to Kakashi, face stuck somewhere between sadness and rage, not at his sensei, but at the unfairness of the world they came from. Why does it have to be this way? Hey kid, you're a useless dreamer, got more guts than brains. Using what strength he had left, he tossed the handle half of his giant cleaver to the boy who awkwardly caught it. That blade is meant for useless dreamers like you and me. Why don't you try succeeding where I failed and change this shitty world of ours? Pausing the lean down and cradle the boy in his lap, Zabuza's voice fell to a whisper, now like me sleep with my son, I think I deserve the rest. 
eye clouded by tears and cradling the surprisingly light blade, Naruto did as his sensei and turned away, allowing the two not-so enemy ninja their peace. At least until a crossbow bolt landed not far from their feet and a cackle met their ears. Well well well, so much for the demon of the mists. More like a kitten if you ask me. Getting cheers and shouts from a crowd of mercenaries and thugs, the shorter than average shipping magnate known as Gato held up a hand. Listen up, leave the girl but kill the rest, a good bounty to whoever brings by the ninja's heads. They're worth a lot of money after all. His proclamation getting cheers, the crowd started across the bridge. Rage building in his chest, Naruto didn't spare any thought to what he was about to do. But it was a gentle hand on his shoulder that had him looking up at his sensei, now mismatched blue and purple eyes looking at the older man accusingly. I won't tell you not to kill them. Just. Remember this moment and what we all that carry the will of fire hope for one day. Rage will leave you empty once spent. I know. To many memories to count, he and Naruto would be having a sit down after this. I'll remember this. And don't worry sensei. Turning back to the approaching mod, summoning more than 100 clones before him, all of their faces grim, he uttered one last thing quietly, not noticing the townspeople showing up. This is just pest control. Forgoing the blade in his hand as these scum weren't worth its edge, Naruto silently commanded his clones forward. The explosions and fire would at least give Haku and Zabuza a flashy send-off. B. Another week, full of construction and rebuilding and raiding Gato's mansion, found at the end of it a completed bridge and a tired Team 7 saying their goodbyes to Tazuna and his family. Shaking the hand of the elder ninja Tazuna himself was happy things had turned out as well as they had, thank you. For everything. Nodding, Kakashi motioned down to his team, they're the ones who believed in continuing and I'm proud of them for what they've achieved. It had taken a few nights of quiet talks to work Naruto through what had happened on the bridge. Filling so many all at once a very large burden, but Naruto was working through it and have promised that if he was affected, that he would see Yamanaka therapist back in the village right away. Grinning and listening to Inari tell him again how he rallied all the townspeople together to come fight with them, Naruto was a bit more subdued by still happy to be heading back home. Little more than half of the giant cleaver strapped to his back, he felt like they had really done some good here, even if things could have gone better. But he learned some important lessons, more than just fighting or techniques. Something that he'd stick in his core for a long time. Feeling Inari finally break down and hug him tightly, Naruto returned it just the same. You take care of your mom okay? And next time you gotta come visit me in Kanoha, got it? Sure thing bro, mom's got nothing to worry about with me around. Backing away and standing next to Tsunami, the entire town was out to wish the team goodbye. And with Kakashi signaling the quiet teens, they turned and walked back home, over the newly completed bridge, and back to the lives they knew. Looking to her father Tsunami smiled softly, do you have a name for your bridge, now that it's complete? Grinning and adjusting his glasses, Tazuna laughed, well at first I was going to call it Tazuna's super awesome bridge of salvation. Getting a few chuckles from the crowd, instead Tazuna watched the influential team of Kanoha Ninja walk away, the loudest of the group waving at Inari as they left. But I'm thinking instead, the great Naruto bridge, after someone who inspired all of us to rise up for ourselves and was willing to risk himself for nothing more than knowing it was the right thing to do. Down the road and now out of sight, it was that very blonde who had a tired grin on his face, oh I'm so ready to be back home. I've got so much to tell the Ichirikus. Looking at his teammate, momentarily forgetting about his unlocked ajutsu, Sasu could help but smirk along with the blonde, well, with as much as you talk about their Raymond, guess I'll join you this time around and to make sure you don't butcher the story too much. Hey I resent that. I was gonna make you look good too, but now you can forget it. Well I better come along too then, just to make sure both of your egos don't get in the way. While Sakura had a long way to go to fix her mentality about Naruto, this mission had really put a big rip in the image she had of the blonde. While she still wouldn't date him she could now at least see him as a capable teammate. Looking left and right at his T-E-A-M-M-A-T-E-S friends. The now heterochamic blonde grinned, alright then. Team 7 is gonna pig out on Raymond when we get back. Believe it. It had been a long and surprisingly difficult mission, but every member of Team 7 was happy to be making it home, each one with their own valuable experience nestled in their heart. Story start. Groaning and stretching as he stood alone in the middle of the training grounds, Iz was a content Naruto who was ready for a new day. While well, Kakashi Sensei had given them a few days of to relax and recuperate from their sea turn to rank mission, Naruto of all of them was ready to buckle down even harder than before. So here he was, half of the headhunter's cleaver on his back and ready to experiment. Bracing himself and making an even 200 clones, Naruto raised a fist and grinned, one half is for chakra control with water walking, one quarter is for shunshin practice, and the last quarter are for seal practice. Let's get to it. Before he fully turned away the clearing was filled with cheers before the sounds of just to use followed. 
sitting down under a tree while placing the still just as large as him sword down against the wood next to him, Naruto unsealed a jar of sealing ink and a brush. Removing his black jacket and getting to work on a scroll, he began to work on applying seals first to the paper and then adhering the paper to his body. From frequent trips to the library and exhausting what scrolls he could borrow on seals, Naruto had learned about these latest ones that would help him with his physical training. Those were weight seals. Instead of dealing with bulky weights that eventually wouldn't be able to keep up, Naruto had decided that these would probably work better in the long run. Finishing and applying one to his chest, where he already could feel the added weight, he started on the next one. The seals were preset to apply a certain percentage of his body weight, which he could later adjust at any point with just a few brush strokes. Eventually with enough training he hoped to be able to strong enough to wave around this giant sword like a feather. But one thing at a time, so they say. Finishing up a total set of six more seals and linking them all together with a master on or off seal on his left wrist, two for each leg and one on each forearm, he activated each before putting his supplies away. Maybe I overdid it. Groaning and forcing himself to stand and eventually doing so, Naruto shook his head, won't get stronger if I don't push myself, let's get to it. Starting off at a slow jog, his goal for the day was to hopefully get up to running speed somewhat close to normal. As usual, if Naruto had been paying attention, he would have considered that the complete set of seven weight seals didn't total out to a percentage of his total weight, but each seal individually did so. Meaning at the moment, he was trying to run with about three times his normal weight. Unnoticed by the sweating blonde was a girl who was doing her best to work up the courage to talk to him. She had heard that his team had returned to the village, and with some light teasing from her own sensei, she had come out early during their own rest day to try to see him. As usual she had found him training to the max. Lavender eyes gaining some determination as she thought of her potential rival and how she wouldn't have a problem talking to her crush, Hinata Hayuga stepped out from behind the tree and made her way to a struggling Naruto. GG good morning, Naruto-kun. She actually spoke out to him. Looking over and seeing the quiet girl, Naruto had to puzzle out for a moment to remember who she was. He didn't speak to her much at the academy, but she was one of the few that was never really mean to him. What was her name again? Oh, hey Hinata-chan. Come out to train early today. Sorry I'm taking up the training ground here, I can clear out if you need. He was sure each team had their own training ground, but he could be wrong. Shaking her head and gaining some confidence, Hinata strode forward, no no, you're not in the way. Um, maybe I could join you. Be bold, be bold, be bold. Sure. The more the merrier. I'm working on my physical fitness right now with weight seals, so I'll be a little slow, but you can join me or work with any of my clones, I've got a bunch. Laughing at himself a bit he continued making laps of the field. Deciding some jogging would be good to start with, she was quick to catch up with Naruto and ran with him on his left, though slightly behind him. The seals he had applied to himself looked complex and well done, and she was so focused on them she almost forgot that she was staring at Naruto's bare arms. Were his muscles always that defined? Lush forming on her face, she did her best to shake her thoughts away. You know, it's gonna get hot soon, you may want to lose that thick jacket. Don't want to pass out early. Seeing it as the most logical thing, Naruto pointed out his own jacket, you can stash it next to mine if you'd like. Going scarlet at the thought of taking off her jacket while in front of Naruto and was ready to deny it and tell him she was fine. Jade eyes crossed her mind. Would she have a problem? Of course not, she didn't need to wear a bulky jacket or hide herself away. Be bold. SSS sure thing. I'll catch up. Dashing away as they came up to Naruto's jacket and sword, Hinata gave his things a quick once over before, all at once making her decision, shucked her jacket and ran to rejoin the boy. Clad in a standard black kanoichi top with mesh lining, Hinata was back to running just behind the bright blonde boy. They ran together in silence for a while, one doing everything he could to focus on not letting the weight crush him, while the other was trying not to die of embarrassment. But, after long enough, the routine of training kicked in, and her blush began to ebb away. Focused on the boy's back, she worked herself up to ask a question. Naruto-kun, what happened to your eye? Slowing only slightly, Naruto thought of how to explain the change of the color to her. Officially Kakashi-sensei said that he should tell everyone that because it was damaged due to potentially poison, that it changed the color permanently. But it felt a little too fake. Then again, if he changed the story now Kakashi-sensei would get seriously mad with him, never mind Jiji. Well during our mission I was fighting this really tough opponent who used Senban. He got me pretty good once and it tore up my eye. Thankfully for some reason I've always healed fast, but now it's just purple. Nothing special about it. And that was true. Besides one of his eyes now being purple, there was nothing different about it. I'm glad to see you've recovered. Though that scar looks painful. Hinata was alluding to the long but thin scar that went from the corner of his left eye to nearly his temple. It didn't bug him at all, only occasionally itching, but that was it. 
slowing and motioning that he was getting on the ground, Naruto began a long series of push-ups, while Hinata absently dropped in front of him and did the same. Well it doesn't hurt all, promise. Just a little itchy sometimes. Gulping down air and focusing on the ground, Naruto wasn't fully prepared when he looked up to make eye contact with a lavender-eyed girl. Because while her cute face was watching him with an inquisitive look, the front of her shirt drooped quite a bit. Blushing and forcefully staring directly into her eyes, Naruto swore to the kami he wasn't turning into his sensei. Seeing her crush turn red, she had to note that he had a lot of weight on him, if the amount of chakra flowing through those seals were an idea. And it was starting to warm up now that the sun was rising. Thinking for a while as she hadn't talked to him, ever, she was curious about what else he had gotten up to. It was pretty easy to talk to him once she got going. How was it, you first mission outside? Averting his eyes down and focusing intently on the dirt, unintentionally giving Hinata the idea that things weren't all that great even if that was the truth, Naruto eventually started recounting the mission. From start to finish he talked about their grumpy old man client, the not-so-smart demon brothers, their first run in with Zabuza, and all the craziness that followed. His tale took long enough for both young ninja to move one from push-ups to sit-ups. Then from sit-ups to squats. Finishing his normal strength training and standing straight finally with a smile, Naruto wound down his story and pointed at his sword, and then we've been back for a few days, I still haven't started really training with Headhunter. But Kakashi said I have plenty of time, and at my level he said it's more of a one-motion weapon anyway, so I should focus on simple movements first. Which he would, and eventually he would find a teacher. Mesmerized by the determination and grit of the boy in front of her, Hinata internally had to hope that one day she could measure up to that same standard. I think you've made a lot of progress, Naruto come. Pausing as she looked up at a now visibly higher sun she smiled, I think you'll make your dreams come true, one day. Happy that he had a friend who believed in him, Naruto hooked a thumb towards the tree where their stuff was, wanna spar for a bit before taking a break for lunch. I've never fought a Hyuga before. Nodding without a thought and waiting for the boy to get situated across from her, she eventually lowered into her family stance, I'm ready. Grinning, Naruto fired forward, seemingly no longer hindered by the extra weight, let's do this. For the rest of the morning Naruto and Hinata sparred back and forth. Hinata showing flexibility and amazing skill in both evading Naruto's wild strikes and punishing his overextensions when she could. In turn while Naruto was slowed down somewhat, he still hit a lot harder than she was used to, but she was happy that someone was taking her seriously. Kiba had a tendency to pull his punches with her, and Shino wasn't the physical type at all. Both children happy and in the moment it was a carefree Naruto who eventually slipped up, not being able to back away from a strike from Hinata completely and taking a full force juke into the side for his error. Yo. That smarts. Lifting his shirt and looking at the bruise forming, Hinata was too frazzled to continue herself. While normally she would be blushing at Naruto's brazen abs display, she was more worried about the damage she may have done. She had moved completely on instinct and hadn't meant to strike with such force. But as Naruto just grinned and laughed, he shrugged and put down his shirt. Are you okay Naruto-kun? Never better. Man, your hits pack a punch. No wonder you're so good. I bet your team really appreciates you. Ever want to dish out compliments, Naruto was all smiles. Plus he was sure the fox was already healing the damage, more than likely he'd be fine in a few minutes. While the huffing and puffing girl wasn't too sure about that, she did look around as there seemed to be a lot less clones on the training field with them. Um, Naruto, what happened to your clones? Ah. Looking around and then looking up, Naruto nodded, it's lunch time. They usually disperse to warn me that it's time to eat. Guess I'm a little distracted. With a chuckle, Naruto was already turning to pick up his down jacket and sword. I didn't mean to break your routine Naruto-kun. She hadn't meant to be a bother, she knew how important a routine could be to some people. No sweat, I had fun. We should train together again sometime, working up a sweat together is the best way to spend a morning. Hearing a thump behind him, Naruto looked back at the passed out Hinata, steam billowing from her ears, wait, Hinata-chan. You okay? He hey. Wake up. Poor boy would learn to choose his words better in the future with someone who had such an active imagination. The blushing but walking next to the grinning boy, Hinata was poking her fingers together as they walked to Ichiraku's raiment stand. I'm sorry for the trouble. Waving his hand with no concern, Naruto was all smiles, it's no sweat, I pass out after a good workout lots of times. I wouldn't judge. Turning and holding the flap for the stand open, Naruto called out, hey there old man. Need a dozen bowls or pork ramen today. Tons of training to catch up on. Looking up to see his favorite customer waltz in, his grin grew a few sizes seeing a blue-haired and lavender-eyed girl coming in along with him. And what was this, Naruto pulled out a seat for her. Oh ho. Well well my boy, order coming up. And what about the little lady? Nearly overwhelmed by the smiling face above them, Hinata pointed at the sign behind him, um, Maizo would be nice please. 
watching the man nod and turn away, there was a pretty girl who came out from the back room upon hearing Naruto was there. Hey there am Ni chan Any good news today? Naruto as always, considered these two some of his most important people in this village. Now if only he had Aruka here, it'd be a nearly perfect lunch. Nope Naruto, nothing new so far. Though it's a sight to see you in here with such a cutie. Who's this? Both teasing and curious, A.M. turned to the Hayuga girl. Rocking in his seat slightly Naruto nodded, this is Hinata-chan. She's on a different team, but she's a good friend of mine. We've been catching up this morning since we haven't really seen each other since the academy. Finally getting his first bowl of ramen, Naruto started to dig in. Shaking her head at the boy's antics, A.M. nodded to the younger girl who had her jacket in her lap, well if Naruto says you're good people you're always welcome here. Looking the younger girl over however, a sly grin worked its way on her face, plus, Naruto really needs someone level-headed to watch out for him. Don't let all the training fool you, he's kind of an airhead. Ignoring the protests from the boy, Hinata nodded to the older woman with a smile on her face. This was nice, warm, much warmer than her family at home. Turning slightly as someone else threw open the barrier, it was a loud girlish voice that drew attention. I knew I heard a loud mouth. What's up whiskers, you overdo it again. Ino wasn't normally one for Raymond, but she was one for following things that interested her. And currently, that was a ditzy blonde. Throwing up a hand and greeting the jade-eyed girl, Naruto was still in high spirits, Ino-chan. You ditch the lazy trio. While he and the Yamanaka hadn't hung out all that much, they had occasionally chatted about plants and their uses and meanings. Ino hadn't been prepared for a boy to know stuff like that, and it was what got her started watching the boy. And as she slid into the seat next to him and placed her own order, she had to silently beg forgiveness from Hinata, sorry, but you snooze you lose, well it wasn't a done deal that she had a serious interest in him, she was curious, and that was enough right now. They're all ing out over on the hill near our training ground. Asuma said today should be a lazy day, and I got bored. Figured I could track you down and watch you blow stuff up. What have you been doing? Leaning forward to look past the boy, Ino gave a wave to the demure Hayuga, hey there Hinata-san. Long time. Nodding to her, Hinata would always be polite, likewise Ino-san. Thinking over this development and not liking it, Hinata sat up a little straighter, Naruto-kun, and I have been training all morning. Turning to the newest addition, Naruto nodded quickly, yeah we have, Hinata is super awesome, and packs a mean punch. He missed the look that passed between the two girls. A she? Maybe we'll have to spar too. Oh ho, maybe the timid girl was growing a spine after all. Well she had a long time to go before she could stand up to the gossip queen. Hinata turned back to her own dish, silently ordering another, I wouldn't mind a spar Ino san It could be, worthwhile. Ignoring what sitting up so straight was doing to her shirt, Hinata could not back down in the face of her enemy right now. Relaxing into her own stool and and adjusting her hair over her shoulder, Ino nodded as her own beggy Raymond came, I'm sure it will be. Oh it was on Hayuga. Trying not to laugh at the scene unfolding before her, A.M. turned back to her father with a grin. While he was doing his best to focus on making food and dealing out orders, she could see the smirk on his face. Her little brother was so popular. Oh she couldn't wait to tease him about this later, when the two youngsters weren't around trying to stake their claim. Deciding to nudge the boat so to speak, A.M. leaned a new bowl in front of Naruto, while taking away his small stack, so Naruto, anything new going on with you besides training? How are your teammates doing? Bring up Sakura, that always got a rise out of him. Shrugging and waving his chopsticks about Naruto dimmed only a little, well Sasuke said he was going to train like crazy and make sure I didn't get ahead of him, not like he can beat me anyway. Ah, sorry Ino-chan. He only too late remembered her crush on the broody boy. Ah don't worry about it, that crush stuff was for the academy. We're ninja now, we gotta focus right. She saw how being a fangirl wasn't working for Sakura and no one would accuse Ino of not being able to learn from others' mistakes. This matched purple and blue eyes locked on the girl, Naruto's opinion of her ticked up a few notches, god I wish Sakura would get that message. She's always on about the stick in the mud. I mean, he's warmed up a bit since we've been on a team, but she's still the same old Sakura. Maybe before he had really focused on his own training he would probably be the same. But with all the hard work and progress he made, it was easy to see how far behind the pinket was getting. Have you offered to train with Sakura-san? It was Hinata who garnered his attention now, leaning forward just slightly more than proper, while looking up at the male blonde, oh, score one for the quiet one, was that a blush on Naruto's face. Hey ah, I've tried, but she always blows me off, so I gave up a while ago. Says something about it'll affect her figure or whatever. I mean, we're ninja, as much as we work out and train, you gotta eat all you can, not like it's easy for us to put on the weight. Naruto was a testament to that. Ever since he had upped his training he was almost always hungry. Good thing mission pay was pretty decent and his apartment was dirt cheap. Ino grimaced for only a moment, that cheap little hussy. So she had some boobs already, but that wasn't everything. 
So do you like girls with a little weight on them then, Naruto-kun. Attempting a decent lowered tone, she was declaring war. Naruto finished his last bowl with a satisfied smile, I mean, everyone should be healthy. Starving yourself is no good. Point of the question flying way over his head, but it was enough for the girls on either side of him. Well Naruto-kun, since you're finished, would you like to continue training? Hinata herself put down her last bowl. Only slightly behind the boy, she'd show her dedication in her own way. Take that stick girl. Shaking his head, Naruto held up a scroll, actually I got around to the Hokage Tower first, I forgot Jiji summoned me about something with a mission. Then I gotta hit the library. Mismatched eyes turning to the Hayuga, his bright smile had the girl swooning, but we can train tomorrow. I still have another couple of free days. Seeing the girl nod in return, Naruto did the polite thing and turned to Ino, I know you'll probably be with your own team, but you're welcome to join us too Ino-chan. Oh you never know, it could be fun. I'll let you know later. Waving as the boy paid for his meal and leaving enough to cover Hinata's and hers, he was out the door and down the street before both girls turned on each other. Listen up princess, just cause you've liked him for a long time doesn't mean no one else can show interest. You've had plenty of time to make a move. Says the hussy that jumps from newest fad to newest fad. I'm actually interested in Naruto-kun, what about you? Eyes hard, things were escalating a little too quickly. Okay time out. AM clapped her hands, seeing a reason to intervene now that the clueless boy was gone. Seeing both girls looking up to her with questioning looks, the pseudo-elder sister grinned. You both know Naruto wouldn't approve of you fighting like this. So let's set some ground rules. Seeing as both girls were paying attention, knowing that if big sis AM said something Naruto would listen, and that also would be true if she decided to tank their chances. Use your minds, not your fists, I know ninja are a more physical bunch, but Naruto doesn't have a lot of people he calls friends, and seeing two friends fighting would crush him. 2. No tricks, at least on Naruto. 3. This is neutral ground, if you're all here, you're here as friends. Got it. Sitting and thinking about it for a moment, the more diplomatic Hayuga had no problem agreeing, that's fair, A.M. San. She'd spar with her father for a week straight before giving up to Ino. Big sis makes the rules. Ino could play the game however, and knew it better than the wallflower. This was going to be easy PC. Smiling and nodding, AM motioned to the door, then off you go. Unless you'd like to order more without Naruto here. Seeing both girls eye each other before shaking their heads and leaving, Tuchi leaned over to his daughter. Why is every ninja that comes through here so crazy? Shrugging AM started collecting empty bowls, I think that's just ninja dad, I think they're all a little cracked. Down the road and making great time to the tower, Naruto was in high spirits. He got to have lunch with probably his two best friends outside of his team, AM seemed to like them, and they agreed to train with him. What more could today ask for? Bounding into the building and slowing only moderately at the stairs, the Yuzumaki was before the Hokage's secretary after only a few moments. The Rudo Yuzumaki, answering the Hokage's summons. Shuffling some papers around before shooting the boy a bored look, the Chunin guard nodded before waving him through, go on, he was expecting you a while ago. Missing the boy chuckle and bow as he walked away, the wondered if he could finally take lunch. Inside the office, closing the door behind him, Naruto was met with his Jiji leaning back into his chair, pipe in hand. With a groan and a weary smile, the Hokage made eye contact with Naruto, it's good to see you my boy. Took you long enough to stop by. Feeling bad that he hadn't been able to check up on the boy. He could at least give him some good news today. Sorry Jiji, woke up and started training right away. Oh, Hinata-chan joined me today, and we had lunch too. Oh oh, and Inochan stopped by as well. And, tuckling and cutting the boy off, Saratobi could always appreciate Naruto's energy. I'm sorry Naruto, as much as I would love for you to tell me all about your day, you are a bit late, and I have something to give you before continuing other duties. He was not looking forward to another council meeting. Did they really need his input in order to change a street name? Scratching his neck, Naruto nodded, sorry Jiji, so what's up? Reaching into his desk the elder ninja pulled out a scroll and leaned forward to hand it to Naruto, who took it slowly and waited for an explanation. We forgot about it during your debriefing of your mission. But because you were the one to solely take down the demon brothers, their bounty also goes to you. So that's your extra payment. Be responsible with it. Saratobi had watched a boy long enough to know he'd just buy more Raymon with it at most. Boy saved quite a lot of money that way. Already thinking of hitting the weapons shop. He needed scrolls and sealing ink. Thanks a lot Jiji, this'll help out a ton. Standing a little straighter, Naruto gave his Hokage a laid back thumbs up. Nodding and waving the boy away with a smile, Saratobi starting piling together his paperwork, go on now and take care of yourself. Watching the boy turn and run off, he wondered briefly if he could get some time with his favorite book. Naruto however was already down the stairs and making a break for the outside world. Lunch with his friends and now extra pay, today was just about perfect. And he knew just what he needed to finish out such a great day. 
the weapon shop owner Higurashi-san had been talking about some explosive liquid the other day. Nitric, nitroos, well nitro something or other. And he just had to get some of it to play with. It was time to get back to his other favorite thing in the whole world. B. Several days and a much poor Naruto later, all of the Genin members of Team 7 were looking at their sensei with disgruntled looks. Though it was Sasuke who spoke up first, you wanna run that by us again. Naruto wiggled a finger in his ear, yeah, I'm pretty sure I had something crazy in my ear just now. Cheeky brats. Kakashi was just showing them how proud he was of them. By signing them up for the next Chunin exams. I think the Chunin exams will be good for you. And plus, they're here in a village so you'll have the home field advantage, which is a big plus. Less likely for anything to happen to you. Sure, they hadn't graduated all that long enough, but they had already been through a lot. They had talent. And if they happened to actually make it further than say, Kurinai's team or Asuma's team, he'd win a pretty decent wager too. He wouldn't even consider his team not making it further than the other sensei's teams, because giving up his book was blasphemy. I mean, do you think we're ready? Sakura was trying to be a voice of reason here, thinking of possibly her own shortcomings for once. Shrugging it was Sasuke who spoke up, I mean, it would be good experience. It's not like we're expected to make Chunin as rookies anyway. We could see what we have to look forward to. Naruto agreed and said as much, plus we could show off and you never know, wouldn't it be super cool if we did make Chunin first try. Ever the optimist, Naruto was all for full steam ahead. Asking the kids their information sheets, he nodded to them before getting ready to go, well there are your forms. Fill them out and meet at the designated location in two days. And don't get into any trouble. Looking pointedly at Naruto, the Jounin left in a swirl of leaves. Looking at each other, the three got comfortable in their training ground, now willing to take it seriously, now that their teacher had left. It was Naruto who held up a finger first, so do we really want to do this? Sasuke nodded, I do, it'd be a good test of our skills to see how far we've come. And personally, to see how much further he had to go before reaching his older brother. Sakura made a show of sighing heavily before nodding, it'd be good for learn something new, plus, we do things as a team, so if you both want to do it, then I'm in. She was trying to warm up to the blonde and not treat him as she had before. It was easier now that he wasn't asking her out all the time. Naruto nodded, so what do you think, going into an unexpected situation, should we be worried about anything? Sakura shrugged, we have our pass codes in case someone tries to take our place or we get separated. Maybe spying options. If we're fighting against other teams, it'd be good to have some idea of how to spy on others and relay information. Book smart she was, that knowledge could be applied when she was focused. Shrugging Naruto made several clones, I mean, I kin to have that covered. Sasuke saw where the mistake was however, remember the bridge. Unless you've already made them, you might be at a disadvantage. Remembering the blood on his face, that missing eye, no. They were alive and here now, that was what mattered. Sakura tapped a clone, couldn't you transform a few? Turn them into pieces of your clothes, or maybe something small so it wouldn't be noticed moving around. Like a bug. Sure you wouldn't get past an aburum, but plenty of others would be fooled. Thinking about it, Naruto looked at all of his clones, about a dozen or so, before trying to plan it out. How about six of you transform into beetles, while three can transform into fake kunai, and three are fake shuriken. Watching the clones nod and do as they were told. With puffs of smoke the requested items and insects were on the ground before them all. All of the bugs quickly disappeared into his jacket, while he pocketed the kunai and shuriken into a special pocket. Funny, like this because they're so much smaller they should probably last much much longer. I'll experiment with it today and tomorrow to get an idea for how long they can last this way. Thanks Sakura, I never would have thought of using my clones this way. Nodding Sakura had a superior smirk on her face, and that's why I'm the smart one, and you're the explosion nut. Sasuke shrugged, anything else we should maybe worry about. Sakura giggled, being vastly outnumbered. I'd have to be dead Sakura-chan. Being vastly overpowered. It was Sasuke with a thoughtful question. Naruto almost immediately wanted to boast that that wouldn't happen. But he too remembered Zabuza and Haku. I could use my clones to force some distance, help us regroup and decide to either fight or retreat. Sakura nodded, I wish I had the chakra to reliably use the shunshin like you. It'd help. Sasuke stood up for her, I can't use it well either right now. So we'll have to rely on Naruto for distraction. It's what he's best at after all. I want to be offended, but I can't be. Spending another half an hour thinking about possible scenarios and plans. The three Chunin hopefuls all stood at the sound of Naruto's stomach grumbling. Are you ever not hungry? Sakura was looking sidelong at the boy. Sasuke stuck between them as per their new norm. I train tons, of course I'm always hungry. That reminded him, he'd have to take the training seals off during the exam. Wouldn't do to be slowed down. Joking and laughing as they made it back to the village proper, it was a distracted Konohamari that slammed into their pink teammate. Hey, watch where you're going. Ugh, why don't you watch it? 
with a forehead that big it's amazing you don't fall over on your face. Giving the girl the stink eye, both of his friends and Naruto were trying to warn him. What was that? The low tone and growl were all Naruto needed to know. You better run Konohamaru. Seeing the girl getting angry, the grandson of the Hokage did just that, turning tail and running as fast as his legs could carry him. Sakura was hot on his heels. You know, should we be worried she can't keep up with an academy student? Naruto was leaning over to Sasuke as they followed much slower and much further back. Oppressed is a better word. Sighing at the skill of their third teammate, the reforming broodster wasn't sure how to help her get over her habits. You know, if you told her you liked girls who could fight, she'd probably start training more than me. Naruto had his hands behind his head, more comfortable than usual on the topic of the girl he used to like. Huh, finally over that crush. Yeah, I guess so. Seems to dumb now, chasing after someone who barely knows you exist. Ow. Hey, watch where you're going brat. How about I put you in your place? Not recognizing the voice, Sasuke and Naruto both blurred ahead, Naruto taking to the roof and scattering clones and Sasuke stayed low and angled into the alley the kids had tried to hide in. Coming up and stopping in front of Sakura, Sasuke sized up the newcomer. Clad in a black bodysuit and purple face paint, the teenager was holding Konohamaru by the front of his shirt. Behind him and obscured slightly by a wrapped bundle on his back was a blonde girl with her hair up in four pigtails, wearing a black battle dress and fishnet stockings. A large war fan was on her back along with a deep frown. Leave him alone Kankuro, we're not here to bully kids. Kid needs to learn some manners, why don't I break a finger or two, and then we can go to Mari. A sadistic grin on the teen's face, Sasuke frowned, but noticed movement along the rooftop. You might want to let the Hokage's grandson go, before something bad happens to you. Sasuke was now completely relaxed, waiting for the fun. Like I give a damn, kid shouldn't have run into me. But in a breath, many things changed at once. Konohamaru was forcibly used as a Kawarimi focus. Replaced by a much larger and grinning black and orange clad blonde who immediately hugged the face painted teen ever meet an exploding clone. While the clone itself couldn't explode, he was certainly covered in enough exploding tags to make up for it. Pankuro. Wait we Tamari didn't get to finish her sentence, a very sharp blade held to her neck. When did he get behind her? Threatening such an important person just days before the Chunin exams. That's plucky. Naruto's tone was cold and for one reason. No one was going to threaten his friends, especially not the kids. Finding themselves in a standoff, a third voice came from the tree, I'm sorry for my siblings, please release them, I'll have them disciplined when we return to our hotel. We're here for the Chunin exams. The last of the three-man sand team, Sabaku no Gara had his arms crossed, while his ever-present sand gourd was vibrating slightly. Sakura stepped forward now, signaling to Naruto that they had Konohamaru, please remember, your guests here. Please don't make trouble. Watching the glacial blonde remove his sword from Tamari's neck before jumping away, the grinning clone poofed himself out of existence. Kankuro released his breath that he had been holding. Before puffing himself up to give them all a piece of his mind. Kankura enough. Or I'll kill you. That froze the older boy in his place. More than a little unnerved about the dynamic between the three teammates, Sasuke stepped forward, you, redhead, what's your name? Tsubaku no Gara. And yours. The blonde too. Sasuke Chiha and Naruto Uzumaki. We'll be waiting for you in the exams. The cold grin on his face, Gara nodded, you better be. I'm looking forward to having worthy opponents. All three siblings left in a swirl of sand after that. Turning to each other after Naruto rejoined them from the high ground, they all had to wonder. Just what kind of monsters were they going to meet during this exam? Story start. The day was bright with a clear sky and warm winds that welcomed all the visitors to the village hidden within the leaves. And today was a special one as a certain lazy Jounin's team readied themselves as they made there. So are we all full on kunai and shuriken? Hi hi Sakura, we're good. Sasuke was patting his own pouches just in case. You got your transformed clones and plenty of sealing ink just in case. Pinket now turned to the black and orange blonde. Yup, and some extra stuff just in case we need a big distraction. Said blonde had a huge grin on his face. Not everything can be solved with explosions Naruto. Sasuke's deadpan tone had Naruto chuckling. Nonsense, that just means you haven't made a big enough explosion yet. As all three reached the front of the testing building, it was Sakura who stepped ahead of the boys and turned to face them with a fist held out, I know I'm not the combat type like you two, but I think we're a great team. Let's watch each other's backs, do our best, and come back alive. Bumping a fist with the girl much to her barely held back delight, Sasuke had his patented smirk on his face, let's do better than that. With all these veterans, let's at least make it to the finals. Show em we mean business. Naruto bumped his fist into his teammate's own, mismatch's eyes switching between them both. Screw that, let's aim to win this thing. We're way too awesome to do anything else. His friends shaking their heads, the team made their way inside. 
Finding no one and making their way up the first set of stairs, they found a large crowd of attendees arguing with that looked like guards to the exam room. There were plenty of teams there, including a few Kum Kanoha, and Sasuke was ready to intervene. But it was Sakura who held him back. Keeping her voice low she nodded back to the hallway, the exam is supposed to be on the third floor, not the second. Come on, let's not bother with this. Seeing Sasuke think it over and then nod, they took the hallway to wrap around the building and take a second set of stairs, reaching the third floor without further incident, and were surprised to see their sensei waiting for them. Holding up a hand and greeting, the masked ninja was all smiles, I see you made it. I'm glad, if you hadn't come all together I would have had to send you back home. All three looked at each other before turning back to the sensei, Sasuke taking the lead, you're the one that taught us. We're a team, either we all go, or no one goes. Nodding with pride, Kakashi stepped aside, then good luck, and I'll be seeing you again soon. The three genin walked by their sensei, each offering him either a salute or a smile. And then they were inside the exam room, and greeted by the disgruntled faces of older genin and out of village teams. Naruto and Sasuke unconsciously stepped slightly ahead of Sakura, casually keeping a hand near his weapon pouch, while the other twitched his fingers in anticipation. But, when no attack came, instead they were met with more of their own rookie genin. Yo ho, forehead. Long time no see. Ino made her appearance, dragging Shikamaru and Choji behind her. Almost didn't think you'd make it. Rolling her eyes and crossing her arms the last member of Team 7 scoffed, if they let you in here pig, then we for sure would be ready to go. Try not to get in the way. Another team, Hinata, Kiba and the quiet Shino made their way over, Kiba all grins and swagger, look what the dog dragged in. What happened to your eye dope? Sasuke have to come save your ass or something. Not having kept up with his former classmate and ignoring an annoyed Hinata, he still fist bumped the blonde. Oh you know, took on some missing ninja, learned some neat tricks. Can't wait to show ya. While well, Naruto was working on being actually confident in his own skills. Having Kiba rib him like that cut a little too close to home. Turning to the boy, it was Hinata who bowed, sorry Naruto-kun, I didn't know if it was okay to tell them about your mission or not. I wanted to ask you first but hadn't had the chance. Seeing the boy's face soften, he nodded. No sweat, feel free to boast about me all you want Hinata-chan. Oi oi, you lot are too loud. Can't you read the room at all? Walking up to the group of nine was an older Konoha ninja. Wearing glasses which he adjusted and have silver hair, he stood over them all by a bit. Who are you to tell us what to do? Shikamaru was half paying attention now, which for him was more than enough. My name is Kabuto, and I'm a veteran of these exams, why I've participated several times so far. Though I've failed each one. Wondering why they would listen to an apparent serial failure, it was Sasuke who piped up next, so you must have some useful information at least. Wanna help out your kohai? Pretending to mull it over, Kabuto pulled out a set of blank cards. Well these are my info cards. Locked away with my chakra I have information on just about every ninja currently participating in these exams. Just give me a name and I should be able to help you out. Kiba worked his way forward again, okay then, let's go with Sasuke Chiha and Naruto Uzumaki. Singling out both the best in the class and the worst, he wanted to see where he stood between the two. Bad and Sabaku no Gara. Sasuke lifted a finger, wondering why Kiba was so interested in his team. Nodding Kabuto shuffled his cards, it takes a little fun out of it if you have their full name, but I got him. Pulling one out and flipping it around, the older boy read from it, Sasuke Chiha, sole heir to the Achiha clan. Member of Team 7 under Hada Kakashi. Multiple D rank, but there is a C rank turned A rank. Special abilities include an unlocked Ajustu, the Sharingan. Shuffling through the cards again, he pulled forth another. Naruto Uzumaki, apparently the last of his clan as well and an orphan since birth. No special skills mentioned, same team as Sasuke Chiha, and completed the same mission turned to rank. Unknown damage to left eye changed its color. Boring. One last shuffle and he pulled forth a third card, Sabaku no Gara, son of the Kazakiyajin leader of his team. Several C, B, and A rank missions, where he has always returned without a scratch on him. Obviously a foe to be concerned about. Stashing his cards away with a Sai Kabuto felt like ribbing some of the foreign teams, not like the newcomers from the Sound Village. Nothing of value on those teams. Overhearing the boy and growling, one boy wearing gauntlets was ready to make Kabuto eat his words, wanna say that to my face you leaf trash. Come get some then. He and his team ready to start a brawl, they were interrupted by an explosion from the front of the room. All of you better sit down and shut up. Your proctor is here and if I see any fighting without my go ahead I'll toss you out myself. The large bandana wearing man was both large and loud, quickly cowing anyone thinking of speaking up against him. Now tune and assistants are going to come around and give you numbers. Those numbers are seats. Take your place as we will begin the first round. Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke all nodded to each other before allowing themselves to be led away to their seats. 
it was a few minutes of everyone getting situated and settled before the now named Ibiki listed off their rules. It's real simple, one point for everything incorrect answer. Two points for every time you get caught cheating. If you have no points left you and your team are out. When there are 10 minutes left I'll be asking a 10th question. No talking. You ready? Don't care, you have one hour, begin. Naruto had been sat next to Hinata and some no-name guy he'd never seen before. Grinning at the flushed girl he focused on the task at hand. After writing his name and thinking the rules over, he didn't have much of a clue on how to go from here. A quick glance showed that these questions were way out of his league for the most part. Well, except for one about explosive note yield. He knew that one. Writing out his answer, he took a subtle look around and noticed just what everyone else was getting up to. A floating sand eye, someone using mirrors, and was Kiba talking to his dog. So everyone else figured out to cheat was the way to go huh? Well, he could play that game too. Making a mental command to a couple of his bug-transformed clones, he sat back and waited. He could see Hinata's furtive glaces at him from the corner of his eye, but he decided to ignore her for now, since he didn't want to get them both in trouble, for now trying to reassure her that he was fine. Handed at 41. You're out, you and your team are to leave at once. Achunin called out, escorting a three-man cell from stone out of the room. And it was there that Naruto sat back and relaxed for a bit, listening to teams get called and removed. While well, he waited for one of his clones to dispel. Which after a few minutes one did so, providing him answers from Sakura's test who he figured for sure wouldn't need to cheat on this test. Quickly jotting his answers down with a pleased smile on his face, he finally could relax for real while crossing his hands behind his head. Man clones ruled. Fiddling with his pencil and waiting it out, Naruto was brought out of his half days as Ibiki drew everyone's attention again, alright. This is your 10 minute warning, and with it, we have your final question. But there's a catch. Take the question and get it wrong and you're out for good, never to take the Chunin exams again. Or you can back out and try again next with with a weaker proctor. Make your decision before your time is up. Naruto went back to ignoring the proctor and the test in general. Kakashi sensei had told them to treat it like a mission. Well you didn't always get choose what mission you could and couldn't take. Sometimes you just had to roll the dice and live with the consequences of that. Knowing that his teammates would be of the same mind, or at least Sakura would follow Sasuke's lead, the blonde decided to relax. If he had paid attention to the heiress next to him, he would have noticed how she herself was taking a small confidence boost from her relaxed crush. But around them candidates were beginning to crack and drop like flies. By the end of the 10 minutes, more than half of the teams had dropped out, and Ibiki was grinning. Well how about it? Are you lot sure you want to take this question? Fancy being stuck Jenin forever. Finally getting bored and needed to speak up, Naruto slammed a hand on his desk. Oh come on already. Either give the question or don't, but don't waste out time. I know if I fail I'll just have to be the first genin to Hokage ever. Believe that you old goat. Frowning and looking directly at the blonde with odd eyes, Ibiki went silent for a moment. Though after a bit and with a savage grin he started laughing. Good Kami you've got some stones on you kid. Well don't worry. Everyone left here passes the test. Ignoring the various outcries and protests from everyone left, Ibiki removed his headband with bandana and began to explain the reasoning behind this information gathering test. How sometimes a mission could and would be compromised because intel could be lost or leaked. That you didn't get to choose not to take the mission at all unless you wanted to be a traitor and leave your village. It was a hard lesson some ninja sometimes had to learn the hard way and using his scarred and tortured head as an aid, he showed he was living proof. Before he could go further however a large mass broke through one of the windows. Spinning and launching kunai at the floor and ceiling, a banner unfurled next to a grinning and scantily clad woman. The banner proclaiming her as sexy and single, the newest jonin to grace them was pointing in the air, your next proctor Anko Midarashi is here. Leaning from behind the banner, Ibiki sighed, his carefully built up aura of men is suddenly gone, you're early, again. Well you're too slow and I was bored. Looking back among the genin, adjusting her jacket just so and relishing in the attention, she scoffed, too many passed again. We have a talented group this time, what can I say? Turning back to the genin Anko had a full-blown smirk, well I'll be knocking those numbers down to less that half. Listen up, everyone meet up at training ground 44. You've got 15 minutes. Seeing no one move, her eye began to twitch. I think I made a mess and poor soul muttered out. She is pretty hot. If you don't get moving I'm gonna start launching kunai. Anko was back in a good mood as every team was forming up and out the windows in a flash. Turning back to Ibiki she shrugged, anyone I should be worried about. No one you shouldn't expect already. Waving a salute, Anko was out the window as well. Ten minutes and several panting teams later, Anko was standing before the assembled group. Holding up a sheet of paper, she was ready to begin explaining. Listen up. Behind me is my own personal playground affectionately nicknamed the Forest of Death. 
inside you will find plenty of local floral and fauna that are just dying to keep you company. Your team will be given one of two scrolls, one are heaven or one of earth. Your task is to take another team's scroll and make it to the center of the forest to the exam tower within five days. Any questions? The plump hand rose from the crowd, what about food? Anko's grin only grew, why the forest will provide. Either it'll feed you or you'll feed it. Motioning to a tent nearby while the gathered teams murmured to each other, she held up a piece of paper, everyone will be provided a consent for that they must sign before being given a scroll. The form is just to release the village from liability if you should do. There are no rules inside the forest, so some advice. She paused while looking them all over, don't die. Team 7 signed their forms and handed them in, retrieving a scroll of heaven for their trouble, which Sakura immediately handed over to Naruto with a nod from Sasuke. Sealing it away on a storage seal marked on his left, should that he could just reach without taking off his jacket, he was suddenly reminded to release his weight seals. Doing so and feeling the associated seal paper burn away, he felt both the restriction on his chakra and his body lifted. He didn't realize the seals were drawing enough chakra for him to notice it, but he'd have to look into that later. Seeing the blonde moving with a new bounce in his step Sakura sighed, do we even want to know what crazy seal you just released? Shrugging Naruto followed behind Sasuke as they found their gate and waited for the start of the test, nothing crazy, just a waiting seal. Something for training that I forgot about. He bounced in place and waved his arms this way and that. He felt like he could fly at the moment. And yet somehow I just know you overdid it. Sakura wanted to smack the oblivious blonde for his antics sometimes, but let this one go. Naruto was a training freak after all, so at least this was somewhat expected. Anything else experimental we should be concerned about. Dilting his head from side to side in thought, Naruto donned a foxy grin and gave his friends a thumbs up, if you see me running full speed away from something either smoking or something I just threw, you'd better just start running with me, no questions. Sasuke sighed, that's just our standard procedure now you maniac. Training with you has clued us into your nonsense. Explosions are life. Explosions are going to get you killed. But it'll be flashy as hell. Hearing a buzzer and their gate open up, all three looked into the darkness of the forest, and it was Sakura who punched both boys in their arms, let's go, you can argue about who's a bigger idiot after we get to the tower. I don't want to spend any more time than I need to in this shitty place. Jumping into the trees, Sasuke and Naruto high-fived and followed after her. How long do you think it'll take before she figures out we do it on purpose? Give it a few years, she's book smart, but to trusting. Catching up to the long-haired girl and flanking her, Naruto immediately set about making a few dozen clones who immediately set off into the trees. So what's the idea? Hunt down some teams right away and get our scroller make our way closer to the tower. Naruto was now fully in battle mode, and the others were learning that this Naruto was much better at on the fly plans. Sakura whirled over a branch and launched herself a little higher for the hell of it, given our manpower advantage, we should try out hunting while heading toward the tower. If we don't get a scroll by then, we'll hide out and wait. Sasuke as well agreed, plus if we get to the tower early we'll have an advantage against the other teams. Of course, again, if we don't get a scroll first. Naruto nodded and they continued on in silence for the next hour, casually making a serpentine path towards the tower. Eventually Naruto frowned and motioned ahead of them, waving three fingers, rain team ahead, I've got a group of clones on M, wanna take him out. Sasuke nodded, do it, try for non-lethal please. Naruto nodded and created a clone that immediately dispersed, slightly confusing Sakura. What was that one for? Naruto poked his head, sending simple mental commands isn't too bad. You know, go here or stop there. But making a battle plan takes more work, so it's easier to make a new clone with my memories that then disperses and sends the information to all of my clones. Nodding and understanding how it worked now, Sakura fell behind the two boys while producing a kunai in her right hand. As Naruto dropped down to the ground level, weaving through the trees and vines, Sasuke and Sakura followed after him to come upon a group of struggling and hog-tied rain genin. Four clones were surrounding them, who all saluted Naruto before jumping back up into the tree cover. Where'd you get the rope? Great secret. Aka. Knocking the other ninja out and rifling in their pockets and packs, it was Sasuke who came upon another heaven scroll. Wrong one, but we could keep it as a bargaining chip if we run into a leaf team. Sounds good to me. Naruto was already looking around and scanning the trees. Sakura sighed as she helped Sasuke drag the three genin against a tree and leaned them up against it. They'd be pissed when they woke, but that was the exam. Let's get moving then, we still have a lot of daylight after all. Both boys nodded and they were quickly back into the trees and onto their meandering path toward the tower. Naruto frowned and twitched for a moment drawing the other two's attention, and he mimed a fist crushing something. Adgar a kid, he can control sand. Crushed one of my clones with it. Sakura nodded, being from the sand village that has to be an amazing skill to have. Better steer clear of them. Yeah, having the memories of getting crushed once is more than enough. 
But Naruto didn't get to finish as a large burst of wind knocked him away from his teammates. Naruto. Almost instantly they were set upon by a grass ninja who was going after Sasuke like it was his only goal in life. Naruto however was trying to right himself and return back to his team. Some was trying to split them up and he was going to show them why that was a bad idea. Something large hissing at him however had him looking over his shoulder, oh you gotta be kidding me. A snake easily three times as tall as he was already had its mouth open wide, ready to swallow him whole. I blame the team. Disappearing from sight, Naruto vanished into the maw of the jungle predator. The small clearing was quiet while the snake swallowed and looked around lazily for its next meal, before something stung from inside its gullet. Retching once, twice, before bloody foam began to escape its mouth, the reptile began to thrash and twist into the trees and dirt, while obviously in pain. And just as suddenly as it had swallowed its easy meal, a black and gleaming sword carved its way out from its soft underbelly. With furious motion, the sword twisted and turned several different ways before in a shower of blood and gore, Naruto burst free from the snake's belly, landing on a knee while holding the sword over his shoulder. Standing and shaking himself free of snake guts and saliva, Naruto pouted. Well, no one saw that, so maybe getting eaten by a snake can be my own secret. Man I'm just racking up once in a lifetime events here. Pulling his sword to look at it, the balance throwing him off a bit, he noticed it was much longer than before. The tip was still missing, looking like the start of the circular cutout was just beginning. Trying to puzzle it out, Naruto decided he didn't have the time right now. Retying it on this back with a roll of bandages, he crossed his fingers, Tajiu, Cage Bush and No Jutsu. Sasuke was already panting and aching from where this extremely skilled ninja had him on the ropes. Even with his Dejutsu active, he was having a hard time keeping up at all. And the enemy nin hit like Kakashi Sensei. Frowning as he saw a clone of Naruto flit behind a tree, Sasuke relented that this was indeed an opponent they should run from. So this is the vaulted Ichiha, I'm not impressed, but I guess I shouldn't have gotten my hopes up leftovers. Quickly squashing down the rage that fired up in his chest, Sasuke leapt from one tree to another, twisting in midair and launching several shuriken at his attacker. Catching them by surprise, the trailing ninja wire locked them against the tree Sasuke had just fled. Without missing a beat Sasuke molded as much chakra as he could then let loose this technique, Katen. Kakaku no justu. The larger than normally fireball slammed into the ninja following the ninja wire. Sasuke pumped more chakra into the technique until he was sure the other nin was down and out before releasing the seal and panting for breath. However that was moot as a sandaled foot slammed into his gut and tossed him to the ground. Oh my, struck a nerve did I. Oh well. The nin's voice slowly changing as he kept talking, Sasuke and a freaking out Sakura looked on as their face was literally peeling away. With a yank, the skin was pulled away to show a pale-skinned man with purple tattoos on his face. Who are you? Do you even want our scroll or not? Sakura's mind was racing. The nin hadn't asked for the scroll, and they didn't seem to be with a team. The fact that they were so much better than Sasuke was also something bothering her. Scroll. What use would I have with that? I'm just here to test out little Sasuke-chan, and I'm finding him very lacking. Ripping the rest of his disguise away, revealing a dusty tunic with an purple obi rope tied around his waist, the intruder was licking his lips with an unnaturally long tongue. Let's see if we can spur some quick improvement too he didn't get to finish as a fist connected with his face and launched him away. The real Naruto landing in the middle of his teammates, he had both by the shoulder. What you say, time to go. Sasuke nodded, pride losing over survival this once, this guy is definitely not a genin. Something is majorly wrong with him. As one, all three turned and booked it. Having to dodge another clone that lunged for him and dispersing it, Arachimaru frowned, you can't run from me for long kitties. However he had to dodge yet another clone that attempted to grab him, dispersing it with a knife hand to the neck. Then another dodge from a kunai with an exploding tag. From there is was a running battle, the older ninja trying to catch up to the genin, while clones delayed him however they could. At first he applauded the boy for smart use of the clones, but after 5 minutes of this he was beyond annoyed with them any longer and he wouldn't have time to give Sasuke his seal, which was out of the question. Waving back and launching several wads of mud at a group of clones, Orochimaru missed one that had just materialized from behind him. How? What Naruto hadn't paid attention to in his training was exactly why the Shunshin wasn't good to battle. Simply put, the chakra needed to move a human body was very noticeable, and any nin worth their salt would see it coming from a mile away. However clones had no real mass and as such needed very little chakra to properly Shunshin. It also meant anyone looking out for the technique wouldn't be able to detect it unless they were a sensor type because it was like looking for particles of light at that point. So when the lone clone shunshined behind Orochimaru and successfully latched on, those memories were going to be invaluable to Naruto later. It's been a blast asshole. This clone just armed with a specially made bracelet was grinning as they both exploded. 
thumbling in a hasty Kawarimi, still smoking slightly, Arachimaru was now on the back pedal as multiple clones tried to perform the same feat. Three appeared directly under him with hands raised already, and that explosion sent him tumbling into a completely different direction to land in a heap on the forest floor. Twisting to his feet with a murderous glint in his eye, a slightly charred Arachimaru looked through the trees, oh I'm going to enjoy killing you. Several clones materializing around and above him, each one armed with several vials of a slightly yellow and brown liquid, and one of them was giving him the finger, doubt that team. The resulting conflagration of light and sound rocked the very earth. Running as fast as they could, shielded by a brace of clones, while two more clone groups each with appropriate copies of Sakura and Sasuke, all peeled away from each other and cut their roots over each other's before breaking away completely. The real group were quick to find a hole and essentially bury themselves in it. Anting but slowly catching their breath, Naruto commanded his clones to conceal themselves and wait for orders. While they hadn't heard or felt anything since that last major explosion, the team still held their breath as they waited. After an agonizing half an hour passed them by, they finally allowed themselves to relax in their hidey hole. Who the hell was that freak? He was waxing you pretty good there Sasuke. The tired to argue Sasuke choose instead to give the blonde his finger estimation of his IQ. Well whoever that was, we need to stay far away from him. Naruto nodded, no problem there. He's either in a training ground sized crater in pieces or at least hurt enough for someone else to deal with him. He was definitely using that nitroglycerin stuff more from now on. And I told you all problems could be solved with more explosions. Hi hi, much boom, very safe now. Thank you Lord Naruto. Sasuke was laying on the sarcasm thick, but he was happy he was alive. Ah yes, please, praise me and my explosions more, it's my fuel. Just what we need, and Naruto with an even bigger ego. Sakura was smiling all the same, happy that for the moment at least they were safe. Twisting his head quickly in a different direction, Naruto's eyes were wide, you've gotta be kidding me. Yup, I take it back, you're still an idiot. Naruto nodded without any other reaction, one of the decoy teams is down, same guy. Was able to get out his name though. Hirachimaru. For some reason he tried to bite your neck, well the clones. You get it. Naruto couldn't remember how many fake teams he had made, but hopefully it'd be enough. Wincing as one particularly unlucky clone slammed head to tits into their exam proctor and paid the price, he knew he was going to be feeling this in the morning. Sakura looked over to the slightly shaking boy before reaching into her small pack and handing him a ration bar. Just like we planned, zone out and concentrate on your clones, we got things here. The hole they found themselves in was barely big enough for the three of them as it was, and the entrance would force anyone to have to crawl on the belly like they had to get in. Nodding and scarfing the bar down, Naruto laid back against his sword and closed his eyes, I'll try directly the guy either away from us or maybe to that sand team. See how he deals with Gara. After that he was quiet, eyes moving rapidly behind his eyelids. It's creepy when he does that. Sakura shrugged, it's the best way for his to coordinate with a massive amount of clones. How many do you think he made? Sasuke shrugged, rubbing a sore shoulder, bet it was close to a thousand with how depleted his chakra feels. Bet he didn't even notice it himself. They had come up with this plan with one big drawback. Naruto making too many clones would either have them run free uncontrolled or he'd have to pretty much shut his main body down so he could give detailed mental orders. He'd only done it once before in training, but this was a real field test that was holding up so far. So, he said Orochimaru didn't he? Name ring any bells. Sasuke was looking at Sakura directly now. Thinking about it and paling as her mind came to an impossible conclusion, she nodded slowly, one man comes to mind. One of the Leaf's greatest defectors. Orochimaru of the Densetsu no Sanin, legendary ninja trained by the Hokage himself. Looking at Sasuke, the girl's heart dropped, and he said he was after you. Leaning back against Trierts, Sasuke nodded, gotta be my eyes. I'm good, but I'm just a genin. So he's someone to stay far away from. They both nodded and looked at the busy blonde beside them. Guess we're here for the night. Better settle in, no fire. Sakura was already trying to get comfortable. I'm having a clone cover the entrance with bushes and branches while some others set traps. We should be good here. Not opening his eyes, he fell deeper into his concentration. It's so creepy when he does that. I'll take this over the sexy no jutsu. Point. What if Naruto gets proper training Sasuke bashing? Thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.